now. Let's hear your biggest amount of hype, biggest amount of cheer. Here we go. It's DKC3, 103% with Void. Good luck. Have fun. Rolling in. Rolling in. Rolling, Rolling in. in. Uh, what's, up, what's up, everyone? This is going to be DKC3, 103%. Uh, first showing of this category at a GDQ, and I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, you guys want to introduce yourselves? Supreme. Claude. Glenn. And Skybill's on the mic. What's the final name? It's Honk. Yes, I believe the goose has taken over. Goose. It's going to be Honk. <laughs> Shout out to Bep, though. He was close, very close. Honk is a good final name, though. He was Big close, fan of honking. Yeah. All right, so All right. ready to go? Right. Are you guys ready to roll unfathomably deep today? Yeah? That's what I All like right. to hear. I think we're good. I All right, good. three, two, one, go. All right, this is DKC3103. Right off the bat, we're actually going to get our first trick, which is going to be Wrinkly Skip. He's, so he, what he has to do here is he has to save the game, and he's going to try to uh, leave at the exact same time he saves the game. He didn't get it, but it's not like a huge deal. And the reason you have to save the game in this category is because if you don't, you're going to soft lock at the very end of the run when you try and get into the uh, final crowd sequence. Yeah, the trick just saves like four seconds. It skips that little, like, showing you the progress screen. Yeah, this is a 103. Uh, objective is just to get everything, all bonus coins, uh, all banana birds, all DK coins, pretty much everything you can imagine, and get the final ending at the end of the game. So we're going to have the first bonus coming up pretty soon here. Uh, you got to throw Kitty at this crack thing to break into it. And by the way, it's the only time that tech is ever used in the entire run, so I hope you enjoyed it. So we have the first bonus here, which is uh, collecting stars. You gotta grab all the stars as fast as you can. Uh, they're actually, these bonuses are really hard to optimize, especially when you use Dixie. She has a smaller hitbox than Kitty, so most of those bonuses will be done with Kitty. And that's our first DK coin. Uh, so the gimmick for DK coins in this game is that uh, every DK coin is guarded by an enemy called a coin, and you must defeat the coin with the steel keg. Uh, unlike in DKC2, where the DK coins are kind of like scattered about everywhere, it's just, uh, that's the only way you can get the DK coins uh, in this game. It kind of hurts the variety a bit, but uh, some of the puzzles are interesting. So here we're seeing the first green banana bonus in this game, and these these bonuses are particularly uh, infamous in this run for being uh, RNG-based. So the, t the time you get on them is dependent on your luck, but also on your reaction time. Yeah, I'll, I'll go into a bit more detail about the Green Banana bonuses in a future one. There's LA's crate, by the way. We're gonna skip LA, though, because she's slow. Yeah, there's a lot of Green Banana bonuses in Wall 2, so we can yeah. talk more about it there. Yeah, Green Banana bonuses are pretty much the biggest instance of RNG in this run. All right. Next up is Doorstop Dash. Behind this level, is you has got to pull these levers to open the doors. And it's a lot trickier than it looks because the less time you spend on the levers, just uh, the faster you can go because you just want to open at the bare minimum amount in order to squeeze under it. Yeah. This level is uh, particularly difficult, actually, uh, even though it's the second level in the game because uh, getting past uh, some of the buzzes in the stage can be quite tricky. And uh, the doors, too. Yeah. So here's uh, another star bonus that we do with Dixie. So it's another one that's really difficult to optimize. And again, you just want to open the door for the least amount of time as possible. 22 is pretty good. Pretty good. 22 pretty good. is what you want to see. So there's actually four kinds of bonuses in this game. There's the stars and the bananas that we saw. There's also find the token, which is just to reach the end. That'll be the second bonus in this stage. And there's bash the baddies, where you have to kill all the enemies to make the coin appear. Don't think I didn't see that you hit the halfway barrel there. You, you didn't skip it. Does that cause lag? I don't think it does. No, I got it. Maybe like one frame. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Let's look at Glenn says at the first duck collect the po uh, coin bonus, but it's pretty trivial. It's just going to glide over the uh, buzzes and that's it. <laughs> A lot of the bonuses early on are pretty straightforward for the most part, but uh, towards the end it can be so, kind of difficult. Yeah. We're seeing Void uh, pick up a bear coin there. Unlike in DKC2, the bear coins are actually required to get 103% in this game. They're required to buy two items that we need later to get uh, banana birds, which uh, cost a total of 55, but using a bit of uh, 
abuse we can do with a little bit less than 55. Yeah, the bear coin that more later, but bear coin was uh bear coin rat was recently renovated like within the past uh, two years to get all the bear coins by the end of world five. Uh, previously, it was just collected by the end of uh, World 8. And we'll, yeah, we'll explain a bit more about that when we get there. Truly the greatest RPG on the SNES. Currency, side quest. It's got everything you want. Deep war, airship. Yeah, and it's got this mini game, which is also here. good. So uh, he's going to be doing this uh, Simon Says Cove here. The pattern is random for every single cove, so he's going to have to just memorize uh, what's shown on screen. Gets a bit more complex later on in the run, and if he completes it, gets a banana bird. And like the true objective actually of this category is just to get all 15 banana birds in order to get the true ending, but it's just in the process of getting all the banana birds, you end up getting everything else in the game. So here we are, title trouble here. Um, this is the first level where you kind of move a lot between water and land. And the trick in this level, you want to be in the water as little as possible because you're really, really slow on water. Especially in this level, because there's actually a current that's pushing to the left, so you're, like, you're even slower here than you normally would be. That's the first appearance of On Guard in this game. On Guard's uh, really, really OP in this game. We'll talk a bit more about him later. He but puts uh, in, He puts in a lot of work. Yeah. He, he bulked up from DKC2. Basically, as long as he's lunging, if you touch anything, it dies. Yeah. Even if it touches his tail or something. It doesn't make any sense. So he's on guard just for that bonus, and you're already back to the Kongs. So they said he's uh, gliding over the water here, avoiding going into it at all costs. Getting two bear coins. Uh, you just get those bear coins as a result of natural movement. You don't really have to go out of your way for that. And here you're supposed to use uh, Kitty's water skip ability in order to enter this bonus, but you can just glide over with Dixie, and it's faster. Well, this bonus is really hard, by the way. You have to hold right and Y, and you just beat it <laughs> automatically. Nice job, Boyd. Thanks. Well done. Proud of you. So often what you'd be doing this stage with only one Kong, uh, because there's a mechanic in this game where every time you enter a barrel, you only want to do it with one Kong optimally because you have to wait for the second Kong to enter the barrel as well. Uh, but for marathon safety, he has two Kongs just in case he takes damage. So here's uh, Skidda's Row. This is the first no level um, where we have ice physics. All right, so before did there was a, what I call a just defend. I'm so glad that term took off, by the way. <laughs> but what you do is you press back as soon as you roll into a crimp, uh, a crimp, which is the name of that enemy he just killed, and it allows you to just roll through him through the front and get a bit of a speed boost. And you want to do it there in order to get a bear coin. It's actually pretty easy there because the ice physics push you along. Yeah, yeah you keep your four momentum. So yeah. We're seeing uh, at least one more of that later in the run. Yeah, the ones later on in the run are a bit trickier. Yeah. It's another DK coin there. Again, uh, for the first few DK coins, they just put the steel keg right next to the coin, but later on he's going to have to like go out of his way to get a steel keg, and some of the uh, gimmicks get a bit interesting. This level, or this bonus can be a bit scary. So if you just touch any enemy during any bonus, you just fail it automatically when you have to retry. Uh, retrying some bonuses aren't too bad, but later on, you might not even be able to retry, and you'll have to like replay the entire level in order to do so. All right, coming up is the most famous uh, level in World 1. This is a Murky Mill. It contains a uh, trick called Ellie Skip. Boy's going to be doing a marathon safe route where he's going to beat the stage first in order to be able to start select out of the level. And what he's going to do is he's going to re-enter. He's going to go for the trick until he gets it because the intended strategy for this level is just to uh, play as Ellie the Elephant. And Ellie the Elephant's really slow because she's afraid of mice and she has to pick up barrels and... And also, this trick is hype, so... Yeah. Right. Ah. All right. Yeah, this is probably the hardest trick in the run, actually, yeah, despite yeah. being in World 1. Yeah. Yeah, it involves uh, two precise jumps, like, and, uh, and uh, you have to release down in a two-frame window. Very nice. There we go. Very nice. Good. Yeah, you notice him pressing up right against the wall and kind of spinning right as he gets to the top, and that's all just to prep for the proper spacing and timing of the jumps and the momentum you need. Mm -hmm. So the idea, idea behind this level is that you're supposed to be playing as Ellie, and she's afraid of the sneaks, which are the names of the, uh, the mice. Uh, but she can't see them unless it's lit, so she, you know, most of the time it's in the dark, but she's, like, scared and whatever. It, it doesn't matter, because he just plays the Kongs, and they're not afraid of anything. 
And here you're supposed to like use Ellie and her trunk to hit the uh, the buzzes, but you just use the Kongs instead. That, it's a little bit slower. That strat is not easy. Though. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's actually a lot tighter than it looks. And as we pass through the level, you can just see like all the stuff that Ellie would have to like slow down for. Like there, she'd have to get a barrel and then take out the that sneak and and take this barrel all the way over underneath these guys. Yeah. yeah Escort including waiting for them to jump up. Yup. And there she's supposed to use her suction ability to grab the steel keg and take out the buzzes, but you can just jump over them if you're a Kong. Mm -hmm. Even if you are Ellie, it's faster to not do that. Oh yeah, you just deep boost the buzzes, yeah. but... I remember the start. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. All right, this is our first boss of the game is uh, Belcha. So, uh, just the same as an A percent, you're just gonna feed him two knickknacks and I'll take him out. There is a glitch in the North American version uh, where his teeth will fly out and the game just uh, won't let you beat him anymore, but he didn't get it. So didn't that's get good. it. I think it's frame perfect. Yeah. yeah. It's like right as the barrel touches the ground again. Mm -hmm. If he had gotten that, he would have had to jump in the pit and try again, so it's good. Yeah, pretty good, roll one. Yeah, very good. Do we have time for a few donations? We have so much. We got uh, a quick one, one and then one. after this next level, we'll be good. Okay. So uh, let's pick a quick one then. Jade78 donates $500. That's pretty sweet. Wow. Nice. Nice. Who says, been looking forward to this void? Beat the world record. It's a bit of a tall order there for bit, the fast. Bit tight. <laughs> All right. Jade. First zip in the run here. What he's going to do is he's going to throw, uh, throw Dixie and have Kitty bounce on the sneak. And that'll allow Kitty to move independently from Dixie. Very nice. From there, if you scroll the screen far enough so that uh, it pushes Dixie into the wall, because Dixie can't leave the screen while she's in the air. If she gets pushed in the wall, she moves straight up until she's no longer in the wall. And then you get moved up to her. Yeah, uh, zip, that particular zip was found somewhat recently. There's a more famous zip coming up in uh, the next world. I guess we can talk a bit more about how Team of Interruption zips work there, but yeah. I think we're I think we're good for a few donations now. Yeah, yeah, you can go pretty down. straightforward now. All right, sounds good. We have a one hundred and three dollar donation from Antilles fifty eight. Much yeah. love there. Shout outs to my Shout man. Shout outs to Antilles. Antilles says void about dang time. This run makes it into GDQ. Agreed. I didn't actually bother to look up where the bear skips are, so I just decided to give you ten dollars per bear. Ish. Shout outs to your amazing couch with AK crew. Looking forward to a void nice run. Thank you. Thank you, Antilles. Terry jumps over the sneak, just makes this throw a little more consistent. Sometimes it's. Yeah, you just slide off. Yeah, it's, off really weird. it's really weird how that works. All right, so uh, the way the green banana bonus does work, it's actually pretty interesting. So there's a, uh, in this bonus in particular, there's four different spawns, but there's like gonna be a set number of bananas that can be in each spawn. So what he's going to try and do is like, try and keep track of like how many bananas appear in each spawn, then try and predict like maybe the last few based on the information he's gained so far. And he'll be trying to do that for pretty much every green banana bonus in the run in order to just try and be as fast as possible. And of course, like the better you get at uh, those green banana bonuses, it like ref like reflects on your time. Yeah. yeah. All right, so this Riverside Race is the speed run level of the speed run. There's even a timer in the bottom right. The goal here is going to be to beat uh, Brash, the Bears PB of 115, which he'll definitely be doing. Uh, if he's really good, he'll be getting maybe like a one flat time, maybe a 101 time. And yeah, it's probably not anymore. <laughs> not I, know, I still believe. That's yes, another green banana bonus. There are three in each spawn here. This is definitely one where uh, keeping track of uh, what spawn can influence your time quite, yeah. quite a bit. You want to get another one in, Sky? Yes, absolutely. Good. We have $50 from Baseman Hero, another awesome community member, yeah. that says, hey man, shout outs to Donkey hey, Runners across the world. I'm happy I've gotten to meet so many great people because of this game. And boy, can you believe it's almost Illyria Gashiri? <laughs> Dang you, Basement like Hero. That was close. Thank I tried. You tried, yeah. Thank you. Uh, it is luck. almost like a Impossible try. game and stay hydrated. Stay hydrated. All right, so the intended strat here is to get the invincibility barrel and bounce off the red buzzes. This is going to be doing a damage boost instead. I'll put Dixie in front for a damage boost coming up a little bit later and also gives you one Kong to enter the bonus barrel. 
Apparently, Anonkos found a faster route there, but I just didn't bother learning it. Which has to Anonkos, though. Mm -hmm. uh, very good DKC3 runner. Yeah, I believe uh, Sui also does that route. Yeah. Sui is uh, it's kind of the DKC3 Japanese god. Uh, he was supposed to run this category here, uh, but he couldn't make it, unfortunately, so. Yeah. Shout out to him. Posaba Pins. Yeah. 102. 102. Nice. 102, 102 2019. Yeah. 102, 2019. Good time and good category. So this is out like a shrine. Oh, I call it squeals on wheels. Because there are squeals on wheels. And you gotta take them out. They're powering uh, the doors, and each time you take out uh, the squeals, uh, you can go through the door pretty much. And some of them are, some doors are more heavily guarded than others. Also, here's gonna be being the stage first. I guess you saw this in Murky Mill. This is the first time it's uh, actually done in like a actual RTA run. He's going to beat the stage first, and he's just going to play through about the first half of the level. And then when he's collected everything he needs, he's going to start select out because there's really nothing in the second half of the level to get, so it's just faster to do it like this. So is there a difference between squeals and sneaks that... There... Oh, no. I mean, there's just sneaks, but so the level's called squeals on wheels. wheels. Okay. The lore. Right? They're, they're, they're called the lore sneaks, man. but they didn't call the level sneaks on wheels. Yeah, squeals and sense. wheels flows better. So, so Sky, I have a question. Um, this, is a, this is a hotly debated topic. Kitty Kong or Donkey Kong? Who's the better of the two? That's really tough. I, I may have to go with Kitty Kong here. Okay, you made the right you're, you're choice. Correct. You made the I right have choice. a question back for y'all. It has been brought to my attention. What, what kind of song does a Kremlin make? Apparently there are people in chat who feel like the Kremlin sound like honks. I don't know if this has to do with the song. No, it's, it's very clearly Og. Is Og. Like Mike, Lou, and Og, the old cartoon. Oh, well, I can't unhear these honks now, that, thanks to chat. Maybe the recoils honk. The recoils might honk. There's a few different ones, but Og is the main one. Og? Is that Og. a consensus on the couch here? I learned everything I know about honking from the documentary Chen Goes Fishing on YouTube. Highly recommend you check that out. Also, this was another green banana bonuses. Uh, I believe the green bananas uh, are favorite on the right here. There's eight on the right and seven on the yep, left. that's correct. Yeah. Not too bad, yeah. Eleven is okay. Yeah, the hitboxes of the wheels can be, like, pretty wonky, so... <laughs> I, 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 I didn't fail it, so that's off good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or you think you're gonna land, then you don't, and you gotta do the backtrack of shame. So let's just be uh, getting the DK coin here and start selecting out. We'll never see what the second half of the level looks like, because there's no need. And we'll be doing that same thing in the remaining two levels in this world. Yep. Although in the last one, we saved a couple seconds. But... Yeah. Here's actually going to be doing a bonus before being the level. He's going to go do the bonus, then come back up and beat the stage. He's going to be damage boosting through these uh, red buzzes here in order to access the bonus and hopefully grab a bear coin there. Worth uh, noting here is he switched to Dixie to sack Dixie so that he can play this level as Kitty. Uh, because there's a mechanic where when Dixie jumps up and like lands on a platform at the height peak of her jump, she like stumbles a bit and can't act for a few frames. But Kitty doesn't have that, so since this is a vertical level and we're gonna jump up it a lot, it's much faster to use Kitty in it than yeah. Dixie. It's interesting how it turns out that like Kitty is larger than Dixie, but he's more nimble. It, he feels yeah. ni more nimble. Yeah. Right, so re-entering this level. I'm gonna grab this uh, safety Kong because I'm gonna try to dodge a B later on. And if I only have one Kong, it can be a uh, pretty monk ass. You can die. It's a yeah. good idea, yeah. Yeah, there's uh, not too much threat of dying in this run as a whole. It's very easy to take unintentional damage, but uh, there's still a uh, threat of like stuff like failed bonuses and all that, which can cost like, a lot of time. Making the first cycles of these jumping spiders wouldn't be possible with Dixie. Yeah. yeah. Now we're gonna be playing as Squawks for a brief bit Ooh, for this got it. Uh, during the bonus. That's a tight squeeze. That's why you wanted very two tight. tongs, yeah. Yep. The hitboxes look really weird. They actually don't have a hitbox in their head, only in the body. And same for Squawks, his hitbox is not on his head. So it's very abusable, especially in later levels where you are primarily Squawks or Quawks. Yeah, Quawks is the purple parrot we'll be seeing later on. In 6-1, you'll see it a lot. That deer right there has killed uh, many runs. Many, 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 many runs. Yeah, because you have to react <laughs> to the randomness of the green bananas, it's just sometimes you can just accidentally do the wrong movement, ram into the red buzz, and one fail of the bonus. The most miserable bonuses in the game. Yeah, there's uh, some good bonuses in this game, and some are just uh, really tough. Pretty tedious to play. Yeah, tedious is a good word. Do we have a donation up? Sure. 
There are so many rolling in. There's just so much love for you today, Void. Uh, we have $25 from Colthor the Barbarian. Who's Yo, Colthor. Yo, Void, rolling in. Rolling in. Yesterday, my son spoke his first word, and it was banana. So yeah, I, I, I saw that tweet. It's cute. It must be a sign that he rolls deep. Good luck on the run, Void. Thank you. I think Colthor's child can't do anything else but roll deep. I mean, that, that guy rolls deep all the time. Yeah. All right, so we just talked to our first bear of the run. His name is Brash. Uh, we talked about how he uh, beat his world record in Riverside Race, the record he's had for two years, and he's just he's so upset that he uh, creates a log which uh, acts as an entrance to the banana bird cave of this, of this world. And now he's uh, beating the stage so he can start to like out of it, just like in the previous two levels. And he's going to be doing the second LA skip of the run. Uh, Glenn, you could probably talk about that, right? Yeah. yeah. So after he does his banana bird first, uh, he's going to... Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dang. So we're going to be skipping Ellie again in this level. Um, there's a, a fairly recent setup that was found last year. By the Glen Yep. <laughs> yeah. And it involves, uh, we're going to get that DK barrel that's at the beginning of the level, and we're going to kind of sneak it under the bee and then toss it in the water, and that'll allow us to stand on top of it and reach the height necessary to team throw up there. Ooh. Ooh. I'm surprised enough. that didn't work, yeah. Yeah. So a, a little uh, subtlety with this is that you actually have to wait for the barrel to sink into the water enough that the LA barrel is off screen enough to despawn before you can throw because you're not throwing over the barrel here. Okay. Yeah, the way we used to do this was so miserable before. You'd have to go in that barrel you just uh, went into and then like team throw go. on the ledge. By the way, very nice. Very well done. Yeah. You have to like team throw on the ledge and it was like very inconsistent. And like that setup you just did like is is very, very, very consistent. As you called it, a game changer. I say, it's, yeah. like, it's like less than a second difference. It's, right? it's 0. 0. 0. 0.7 seconds slower, but I mean, that trick used to be awful. Like you'd have to reset into like maybe I was like say, it's 20 like minutes when they slower than first try, but getting first try, the old one was very different. Very different. Yeah. Yeah. Like kind of when they found the cannon list setup, it's like it loses time, but- It loses four seconds, but it makes it free. So. Makes it free. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So we're supposed to be playing this level as Ellie, but hey, we're the Kongs, and the Kongs can navigate this uh, much better than Ellie can, just like in 1-5. And there he uh, threw the tin can, but the coin wasn't loaded on the screen. So the uh, the steel keg just bounced off the wall, and then he loaded the coin, and it hit him on the recoil, and just uh, got the DK coin like that. Pretty cool trick. This bonus especially is why skipping LA is really important. Well, this bonus is also why like yeah. this game is so laggy. Yeah. Example. Like, the game doesn't expect you to have two Kongs here. You're supposed to have the elephant. So. Ellie can't sink in the water, so the intended strat is to bounce off of two beetles. Uh, which then allows you to fall far enough in. Also, in this game, you have to start select when you come out of a bonus, unlike in 102, where you can just start select on the coin. This is the second boss of the uh, the run, Arik. Arik's another thing that has killed many, many, many runs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's exactly this the guy's same a jerk. As, exactly the same as an 8%, but uh, sometimes he just has a mind of his own. That was very that nice. Was, that was, that was Pretty clean. Yeah. Sub 22, nice. Nice, yeah. We can take another donation real quick. All right, sounds good. We have $15 from Algernon who says, what's up, Void? DKC was my very first video game and I've been waiting since 2012 to see this category finally get its time in the sun. Donations go to Sonic 06, an extra $10 for one Psycho Cows, and as always, roll deep. And speaking of which as well, we're currently $33,387 out of 36,000 for Sonic the Hedgehog, so about... 2400 and remember that Sonic no the Hedgehog man. 2006 so if you want to see somebody play a very exceptional Sonic game exceptional in air quotes <laughs> get those donations in. a unique Sonic game a unique experience so they're entering Mechanos here and this is where difficulty really really ramps up yeah, this level, Fireball Frenzy, is like the first real level of the run in any percent at least, but like... World 2 is still pretty hard in this category. Yeah, the, the early game in 103 is really hard. Like, it, it's being slept on, but like... <laughs> I was talking with Claude yesterday and he was like, yeah, the hardest worlds in this game are in this run are like worlds 1, 2, and 8. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. And 8, eight being the yeah. last world, of course. Like, when I'm doing attempts at home, like, when I reach wall 3, this is like, okay, this is a comfort zone. This is, where, this is where I can, like, turn the, the autopilot on, basically. Yeah. That's just true. That was a good climb, by the way. The ropes in the North American version work a bit differently than the ropes in the Japanese version. You kind of like go over them more often, but. Mm -hmm. so in this bonus, we're gonna get to see the spider, whose name is Shoes. Shoes the spider. Shoes the That's spider. His name, I uh, won't hear otherwise. Yeah, ideally he's gonna try and take out all the buzzes here without slowing down. That's yeah, pretty, pretty good, 13. Good. Yeah, 13. what you want. 
And here he's going to be doing a uh, cool trick shot to try and take out a buzz while he's still the uh, spider. Yeah, no. Oh, he missed. And aim. Ideally, you can uh, take out the buzz and you get a little bit of a better line heading over to the platform here. So, so Glenn, uh, you seem very passionate about shoes. Is that your favorite DK animal, buddy? Oh, no, it's not, actually. Oh, could you, can you enlighten me about your favorite animal, buddy? Well, it would be the frog from Donkey Kong Country 1. Huh. Named Winky. 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 Okay. okay. Winky is a frog. Winky is, in fact, a frog. <laughs> So this is going to be the first instance of, I guess, what I call the crying Dixie tech, where you, she's just, uh, you team throw Dixie, and she's going to act as uh, just a vehicle to pick up the green bananas automatically, where our kitty uh, works to collect them on his own there. There's going to be a guaranteed uh, two spawns there. I mean, uh, every spawn, or every green banana. I think there's three for Dixie. There? No, there's two. This bonus is really scary, because the cheese balls have really wonky hitboxes. Yeah, it's pretty easy to fail that. Oh, Claude, by the way, trivia time. Do you know what these guys are named shooting the fireballs? Yeah, carbines. Yeah. I learned the lore for uh, commentary here. Did a lot of research. I was impressed. Yeah. yeah. Car carbine with a K. Mm -hmm. uh, D-boost here, so we don't have to go like, all the way. All the way yeah. to the left, yeah. yeah. It's also done 80%. That ending can be a little bit scary. I think yeah. slow down just to make sure you didn't die. Yeah. I've always slowed down there. You can do it without slowing down, yeah. but <laughs> every time I've tried to do it, I've died, so... Yeah, better safe than sorry. Yeah. Passed by a bear's hut there. We'll be visiting him at the very end of the game, actually, when we have a few more items it's in our inventory. too hard to do without slowing down, but it's not really worth the risk. Yeah, yeah. exactly. All right, this is our first uh, true auto-scroller of the run, Demolition Drain Pipe. Uh, he's... It's a little bit harder in uh, 103, of course, because you'll be entering the bonuses, and also you have to get all the bear coins. The auto-scrollers are a great source of bear coins. This one is seven. I almost forgot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is basically going to be donation time, so you can go ahead, Sky. All right, sounds good. We have $25 from SHM that says, best of luck to my main man, Void. Go catch those gnarly waves, bro, and keep on rolling deep to prevent cancer. Thanks, man. Quattropos donates $10 saying, rolling in. Good rolling. luck, rolling. Void, on the 103 2020 run. Thank you very much. So ideally, he wants to be jumping up the slopes and also uh, jumping out of the pits there. It saves a few frames each time he does it. Nothing huge, but, uh, you know, working to optimize the auto-scrollers is kind of a donkey Whenever tradition. Whenever you, like, move down in this stage, you get a speed boost. So when you, like, jump into the pits or off the rails, you get a little speed boost. Moving on the rails themselves is actually really slow. Mm -hmm. But if you just grab them and jump off, you get a speed boost. And if you want to jump back in, Sky. All right, sounds good. Y'all may know this face as well. We have $25 from Anankas. Yeah. Anankas. Anankas. Good luck, Amen. Boyd, on the best category in Donkey. Also, happy 28 days till Alari Jashiri. <laughs> Roland D. I like a shrine. Uh, Y'all are making me read that, but you know what? It's worth it. It is worth it, yeah. We have $35 from Neo Drake, who says, Rolling in. Glad to see my boy Boyd running DKC3 103%. Need to donate during his run and wish him the best of luck. Let's roll deep and kick cancer's bus. Thank you. GDQ, hype! Hype! Hi. All right, because DKC3 owns, we're going to follow up an auto scroller with another auto scroller. It's uh, <laughs> Ripstar Rage. It'll be featuring the second team throw interruption zip of the run. Uh, as uh, Glenn explained earlier, he's going to try and uh, just team throw while uh, landing on a sneak. That will like displace Dixie, and hopefully he'll just uh, zip up to the top. This zip is really old. Yeah, this is yeah. the this most is iconic. The oldest one. Yeah. Yeah. It's only very been like one. the past year that it's been implemented in other stages. And there you go. Very nice. Awesome. Very good. Yep. That saves 11 seconds. So, Glenn, as a man who wears flannel, uh, oh, yes. you're clearly a lumberjack, right? And this is how you saw a tree. Is this is this uh, accurate? I don't know. I'm gonna go buy the lumberjacks from Link to the Past. They 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 go the other way. They go across, not up. Maybe they do. Okay. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. It's still I, them. I think who, it's still uh, them running yeah, the tree, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's the, it is. I did not know that. That's official lore. Official lore. Huh. So he's also gonna be trying to save the animals here. Each uh, enemy you kill wastes uh, two frames, so he's going to try and uh, take out as many as few sneaks as possible here to try and save a minimal amount of time in this auto scroller. You can save upwards of a quarter of a second. Yeah, it's truly insane, honestly. Yeah. Another slight optimization would be entering the second bonus as fast as possible. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, definitely worth it. But yeah, you can go ahead with yeah. more donations, guy. All right, sounds good. We have 
$103 donation from Snack Pack, who says a DKC game without Ramby. 103 2020. Also, shout out to the couch. Thanks for the great commentary. Can we hear for the couch so far? Y'all have been great. Yeah. I do it because I love Donkey Kong. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Snack Pack, oh, but heck, Ramby. Heck, Ramby. Yeah, so this uh, bonus also owns. It's basically just an auto scroller <laughs> green banana bonus. Uh, an auto scroller within an auto scroller? Yeah. And RNG. No way. It's like the perfect thing. Perfect bonus. Yeah, I, I think you can miss uh, one and still be fine. If you miss two, you might actually start to lose time, but yeah. even missing a green yeah, banana one is usually pretty hard. Yeah. After, if you miss more than two, you fail. Yeah. Because once you get to the top, uh, the bananas don't spawn. Or rather, like, there are no bananas that spawn when you get to that high. Also, there's an ungettable bear coin in this level, and it haunts me to this day. Like, it's just, you can't get it without cheat codes. It's, like, a little bit to the right here. Yeah, it's just, it's just chilling. Yeah. Like, between two branches. Right? Yeah, exactly. I guess it's just a developer mistake or something, but... They're taunting. They knew this moment was going to come, and they were going to find someone who yeah. wanted it <laughs> and couldn't get it. Think about that bear coin every day, dude. <laughs> It haunts, it haunts your dreams. It really does. It really does. Uh, Blazing Bazooks is here. Uh, this is so we're gonna take a, a deep boost right at the beginning here, and the reason for this is, as Claude mentioned earlier, the entering barrels with one call. Nice just defense. Nice Very nice. Defend. Yeah. I was not gonna make that cycle anyways. So the, how it works with barrels is uh, it, they don't shoot until both or like all of your pongs are in it. So if you have two pongs, you have to wait for the second one to then fall the first one in. But if you have one Kong, it just fires immediately. Right, we're gonna play most of the stage with Hong Kong. And now our squitter. Squitter appears in every factory level, uh, just for a little bit. Sometimes he's the focus, sometimes he's not. This would be uh, find the coin. It's basically just the bash the bags bonus because you have to take out all the enemies in order to get the like coin for the most part. Yeah. The, the also worth Crash mentioning, you saw me land uh, between those two poles of uh, green jello. Uh, they don't have hitboxes. So. We take advantage of that. Uh, it's gonna be uh, showcased more in another level later in Wolf 5. Yeah, so that was kind of interesting. He had to uh, change the barrel type that the bazooka was shooting out to the steel keg in order to take out the coin. The Japanese version, you can just shoot the uh, the switch in order to take it out. But uh, North American version, you have Jump to manually tight, hit it. Jump, look tight, put attack, you're free. Yep. You always go through the rope. There's no chance of grabbing from underneath, so you can just uh, get over there. So if you have one, have one Kong there, you can make that cycle. When you, whereas if you have both, uh, you get like delayed just enough by the barrel lag that. Do so you ha you have like a small window, right, where you could possibly sneak through, but it's usually too tight to be worth it. Well, I guess if you have the use pizza mash or something, yeah. Yeah. Just use pizza. Though. We do pick up Dixie there to get in this bonus faster. You don't actually lose time on that barrel because you'd have to wait for the TNT to pass it anyway. Yep. I'll be doing the rest of the stage with one Kong. There is a uh, glitch in the North American version where sometimes you'll grab like a phantom rope like right here. Yeah. And he's doing safer movement to avoid it and you'll just be like stuck and the bazooka kills you and there's nothing there is, to do. There is a consistent way to avoid it, but you might as well be really safe here. Yeah. yeah. Especially because in this level, halfway is off to the side, like you, there's no chance you're going to get it. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is Gil, Gil's home. Yeah, shout out to the Gil42. Put on the Air Jordans in this one. Yeah, low G Labyrinth, uh, you jump uh, really high. You also move pretty slowly. Uh, this is one of the longest levels in the entire run just because of uh, that mechanic. It makes you move half, half speed. Yeah, I'll be doing another Just Defend here in order to uh, skip a pretty slow jump. Very nice. Also yeah. very difficult to level to optimize because everything's half speed, so your mistakes are twice as costly. Uh, that, this bear coin's not in the official route. I don't know. I don't know why you got it. It's a shameful bear coin. The, sh the bear coin of shame. I have no shame. Yeah. Here's going to be doing a deboost to enter the first bonus a little bit earlier. Ideally, you're supposed to get the uh, clocks, the purple pair, and then backtrack. But by doing this deboost, you can enter it faster. And you're going to have Kitty for this bonus, which means you're going to have uh, Kitty's larger hitbox in order to collect the stars much faster than uh, the pair would be able to. This bonus is still impossible. Even with it's very difficult. This is looking this really is good. Last 16. Ooh, 16. Wow. That is optimal. Yep. Very nice. It's funny, I mentioned, oh, the bonus is impossible, and then I do it perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> That's our void. Making right. the impossible possible. This is Quark's the purple pair. He's a lot like Squawks, except he can't fire any shots, but he can pick up barrels. He's like he's like Squawks, except worse. So here's a little bit more of the uh, B hitbox abuse. You just go, like, right up the middle here. Yeah, the mashing here is pretty intense. Uh, the faster you mash, the faster you can uh, gain height, so... It's another difficult bonus to do here. 
Yeah, second bonus, you will be playing Squawks on this one. This one's a little bit harder than it looks just because Squawks moves in slow motion, and if you miss a shot, it can be pretty hard to recover just because it's, like, so off-center. It also takes him, like, 10 years to turn around. Yeah. 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 Also, for some reason, this level and this level only, when you complete a bonus, you don't, like, see the bonus barrel, like, warping you out. You just, like, kind of just appear. I don't know why that is. Maybe it just has to do with, like, the mechanic of the stage or whatever, but you'll just be Squawks here. It's kind of strange. Yeah. I've done this a few times, and I, I've never, like, paid attention to that. I just yeah. kind of accepted it. Is it only this level? It is only this level. Huh. Also, one nice thing I don't think we really mentioned, just a small detail for the, the casual fan, is that oh. unlike the other two games, there are always just two bonuses and one coin. Like, there's no... Yes. Yeah. except there's, for Kremato. Right. Void did a little trick there where he turned around before touching the sign and, like, moved into it with his momentum. Actually saves like about a second here. Yeah, because of how slow we move. It spawns the uh, steel keg closer yeah. to where you need to throw uh, to hit the coin. That uh, deboost was uh, not intentional. Not intentional, but it doesn't matter yeah, too yeah, much. Yeah, not a huge deal at all. Yeah. Coming up is Chaos. This is uh, one of the most iconic <laughs> boss fights in the category. He's going to be going for a trick called One Cycle. And uh, as you think, you have to beat the boss in one cycle. And it's because of a North American exclusive glitch where you can do infinite team throws, where you can bounce off of Chaos's head and just keep team throwing Dixie and hit him infinitely. And he's going to want to hit him on uh, six times. So let's look. It's pretty precise. Yeah. So far. Ooh, uh, big drop. Uh, oh, save? My the save? The save? Oh, my the... heck. Wow. The save. Wow, incredible. What a legend. Yeah. That's it. Great Redemption. job. Wow. Nice. That is really, really difficult. I can't really believe difficult. you recovered that. that. really difficult. Like, the setup itself is difficult in maintaining it. To recover from messing up the setup, that was awesome. That was yeah. phenomenal, yeah. Because I was too low, but like luckily I got bounced to the right. If I got yeah. bounced to the left, I would have not gotten it. Yeah, it's very easy just like get get bounced off and then just Dixie falls off and you just have to wait yeah. out cycle. I'm glad I'm glad I got that trick because I did it in uh, my race against Blonde. Shout out to Blonde, by the way, uh, at SGQ 2016. I went for it, but I didn't get one cycle. I got it two cycles. Redemption. Redemption. Yeah. Yeah. I have noticed that we actually didn't do a banana bird in Mechanos, and that's because in order to get to that banana bird, you have to complete the trading sequence. So it's gonna be actually the very last banana bird we do in the run. Fine banana bird right there. All right, this is uh, Boz's blockade. Uh, there's not too much going on the stage. It's basically just the uh, standard swimming level of the run. Uh, it's probably a pretty good time for donations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was about to mention it, actually. Sounds good. You even have some love from your second couch. We have $25 from Raikou Rider, who says, It's been a long time coming, but I'm ecstatic to see 103% at the 10th anniversary of GDQ. This category was my very first speedrun in 2013, and it's made me involved with the Roland Deep community and many other amazing communities. Shout out to Techio, the pioneer of 103. I will donate an extra $25 if Void Nails GDQ jump. Roland Deep! Rolling. Rolling. Rolling deep. All right. Shouts to my boy on the B couch. Yeah, so uh, even though uh, Kitty and Dixie have different hitboxes on land, in the water, I'm pretty sure they're the same. So having Kitty in front here isn't that big of a detriment for uh, avoiding the enemies. You'll be doing a very small skip to get uh, two bear coins. It's just faster to take that shortcut through the reef anyways. This, however, is pretty tight and be a little difficult to get through. Yeah. Very easy to get bumped. Swimming in general in uh, DGC games, you want to avoid touching the corners as much as possible. You have very slow acceleration. And anytime you hit a wall, uh, okay, <laughs> that was interesting. I think you yeah. got stuck there in practice, speed, right? right? Yeah, I think that's the corner that owned me. Yeah, before you had one Kong, you died. This time, yeah, this time you're fine. This time I'm fine. So this is a. Uh, Really good example of how overpowered on guard's hitbox is. Like, he's just mashing the button, and he's just taking out all, all the fish with, like, no issue at all. Like, it, it looks like it might be a little bit scary. Like, what if he, like, accidentally gets hit? But, like, no, it's... Yeah, we're, okay. like, yeah. we're, we're chilling. I've never seen anyone even fail that bonus, like, ever. I have. Really? Wow. Okay, you've seen it, or please tell me you didn't do I, it. I've done it. Oh. Really? Oh. Awkward. Way to make him feel bad, Claude. You realize you just said that to probably 100,000 people plus, yeah. right? <laughs> That's quite the conviction. We, every every speedrunner has done some kind of really embarrassingly bad mistake. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's free to re-enter the bonus anyway. That's true. Right. 
This is a rocket barrel ride. Uh, so the gimmick of this level is you're gonna be taking the rocket barrels up the waterfall, and it's pretty much the exact same as any percent. Uh, it's really not too much going on. It's, the second half is kind of interesting, but the first so half, yeah. Pretty straightforward level. Yeah. This is like for donations. Yeah. Yep. All right, sounds good. We have $5 from MMK0, who says, Yo, Void, Zero here. Glad to see you show off this amazing run to the world on a GDQ. Always awesome to see you grind the games on stream. Shout out to the amazing couch, and I'm gonna say plural, couches behind you. My grandpa sadly died to lung cancer a couple of years ago, so I had a rather personal reason to donate. Let's beat cancer, and don't forget, heck, Ramby. Heck, Ramby. I was gonna Ramby. ask you about that. Why y'all hitting on Ramby? Because he's bad. He's slow, <laughs> it, tanky. It has to do with when I was playing 102% earlier in 2019. Like, we got a pretty recent discovery in uh, one of the levels in World 2, and Rambi is heavily involved in that level, and I lost a lot of runs because of Rambi, so heck Rambi. The official lore. So are, like, you an Ellie fan now, or is it just all of them? Are no, now? Ellie sucks too. Yeah. Well, you don't have to play as Ellie in this game, so... Well, well you, you do. Play, you don't have to play as much with Ellie. Right. Yeah, that's true. Y'all have strong opinions over there, I'm just saying. It's years, years and years of pent-up frustration. Let's talk about some good animal buddies, like Perry the Parallel Bird here. This is uh, his first appearance. Uh, it's actually not required that you get him in this level, but uh, he'll make the second bonus a lot faster due to the fact that he'll be making collecting stars a lot easier. Here's, here's doing some skips uh, with the uh, team throw mechanic. Yeah, that's not intended at all. Good. Yeah. Supposed if to you uh, don't team throw up to the right spot, you, that bonus may not spawn. Yeah. It's a good thing that didn't happen. So see, you, you can ask the uh, parry just collecting the stars like automatically. and He's just, just holding right here. Yep. Hold, holding right and Y again. Yeah, parry will be gotten a few more times later on the run, and uh, his role is a lot more important because he'll be turning into uh, bonus barrels, which are obviously oh. needed to do the bonuses. So that's, that's not the intended way to get that coin, right? You're, you know, you're supposed to make use of those. Yeah, the, the supposed barrel. to use the barrel to shoot mm -hmm. over it. All right, creeping clasps. So we're actually going to be playing as Kitty for a small amount here, even though Kitty jumps off of uh, ropes a bit slower. But we're going to be uh, sacking him pretty quick here because uh, you don't have two Kongs in this level. It does cause more lag. But uh, if you do uh, this here, you can just get bonus uh, right away. I mean, a little you, bit faster. A little yeah. bit faster. It doesn't really matter too much. Mostly, you're just getting rid of Kitty because you need him in the previous level yeah. in order to have Solo Dixie here. We're gonna actually pick him up again later, even though he likes a lot in this level. Yeah. Yeah, because unfortunately, you need him for the next level. And if it wasn't clear, sacking, sacrifice, or if you're a football manager in Europe, that's what happens. You get fired. So <laughs> that's how they actually get rid of them in Europe, I think. I'm not sure, though, if there's any Europeans that can confirm that's what you do to a manager. All right. I mean, I'm surprised you know that much already. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what happens. I've been polluted by being in this community. You can <laughs> just see the lag there already. <laughs> yeah, this bonus is pretty straightforward. You just glide under the clasp there and just go straight to the bonus coin. Really not too much uh, going on. Uh, at the end of this stage, there's a trick called the recoil roll, which you probably won't be going for. Uh, it's uh, pretty easy in 8%, but in 103, because you come out of the bonuses, the nibla, which is the fish in the water there, is in a different spot. Yeah. It's just a lot more awkward to do. Just do a, a nice and easy glide, yeah. which was the old strat. And the uh, DK coins are just right there at the end. Not too tricky. Next level is Tracker Barrel Trek. This is probably the hardest level in World uh, 4, just yeah, in front sure. Top Cove. This is World 4, by the way. <laughs> world 4, by the way. Yeah, officially... Are you sure? I thought sure. the last one was World 4. I mean, but the official before. lore is that this is World 3 and Mechanos is World 4, but in this, every speedrun in this game, you do uh, Mechanos as the okay. third world, so... Yeah, I just always call this World 4. Same. So here I'm gonna swap to Kitty like, once again so that I can collect the stars easier. Yeah, you need Dixie for her glide ability in order to enter the bonus, and then you want Kitty for his large hitbox for this bonus itself. Uh, Ooh, four Almost 14. Yeah. Not too bad though. It's about a second and a half for every shot. Yeah, Ki shot. something like that, yeah. And having Kitty in front is nice because you're going to be doing a damage boost in order to skip a tracker barrel here as well. 
And he's going to be maintaining Solo Dixie here for the entirety of the level in order to air the barrels faster. But we can't avoid uh, Ellie here uh, in the stage because Ellie will turn into a very important item at the end of the level, which will be the steel keg needs to defeat the coin in order to get the coin, DK coin. So uh, yeah, this level can be pretty scary because you're doing most of it with one Kong. So entering the bonus and in the bonus here, we're going to see a little bit of tech where if you try to squirt water with Ellie while she doesn't have any to squirt, it actually kills her upward momentum. Yeah, trunk cancel. Trunk cancel thing yeah. is, uh, yeah. The official name from is the it? official lore. Nice. Yeah, any, any hit here will be a uh, death. He did get the midway, I'm pretty sure. So. Yeah, I did. It will be a huge time loss if he does die. And here we'll see more, more trunk cancels. If he's not doing the trunk cancels, he'll hit the uh, buzzes located above there. So very important to do that. And uh, when he grabs the DK coin, he's going to be doing some uh, lag reduction. Uh, he's going to be staying on the bottom and facing to the right, because if he stayed up on top and followed uh, the, the tin can as it rolled along, he'd be getting a lot of lag. I hear there's like none, yep. so that's pretty good. He does a little wiggle to despawn one of the... Uh... What are they called again? Uh, crumples? Crumples, yeah. Crumples, yeah. Which reduces the light. Very it's nice. That level went well, I'm surprised. It's a really good run yeah, so far, actually. Very good. Yeah. Feed your fish. Yep. Fish, Feed your food, fish. Fish food frenzy. So, Nibla's our friend now. We gotta keep him uh, well fed. Got to feed him a strong yeah. word. Friend in quotation marks. He has a few allergies, though. Or really only, I guess only one allergy. Yeah, the lurchins. You don't want to feed them the lurchins. You don't want to feed them the cocos, I believe they're called. Sometimes and he wants to eat them, though. Yeah. Like, sometimes it's, it's just unavoidable. Like, it's like, whenever you have an allergy, sometimes you just want what you can't have. And this is the, the most best bonus, bonus of the game, yeah. This bonus is so strange because it's just green bananas. You just swim and you cut them, and there's, like, really no challenge at all. I feel like there's, like, something else that was should have been implemented in here, but maybe they didn't have enough time or something, but... Yeah. Also, every green banana bonus, or every green banana in this bonus in particular, has a unique spawn, so you can't really predict it at all. I mean, I guess if you're like really cosmic brain, you can know where the last one is if you knew where every other green every... banana in all other 14 locations were, but it's hard it's too much. Yeah. I just wing it. Yeah. So it's mostly pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's that... another good time for donations. Mm -hmm. All right, we have five dollars from Protons. He says, "Rolling in, all Rolling the way to in. my boy, Void, Void." Okay. Thanks, man. Galardia donates twenty-five dollars, saying, "Hey, it's my first time seeing Void in color." Love Ran Ramby, by the way. Hey, I had to do a lot of special effects to get you in color on stream. I was pretty impressed. Yeah. yeah. Do you use Game Boy Camera as well, like Pidge? No, no, I don't. No, he's just actually black I'm and black white. Black and white in person. But I have to put colors on for GQs. Just the pitch, by the way. We have ten dollars from Slice and Dice. He says it's always a good time when Void is rolling deep. Thank you, Slice. All right, so I think the intent strat to enter this next bonus is to have the Nibla eat the Lurchin, but it's just fast to do a D-boost through. Yeah. Also actually, fixes your Kong order. Actually, yeah. pretty hard to do it without having him like get angry at you. Yeah. All right, so this bonus is pretty cool. Just gonna have the uh, Nibla eat all the uh, Cocos in order to beat it. Uh, it's a bit harder than it looks. Sometimes the uh, Nibla has a mind of its own. It's even possible to despawn him and you just can't even beat the bonus. Yep. That happened to me once. Almost 23, that was pretty good though. Yeah, yeah. Too bad, yeah. Yeah, the reason I want Kitty in front here is because he's going to have to do a team throw to uh, reach the DK coin at the end of the stage. Like, underwater levels are very straightforward as far as, like, where the DK coin can possibly be, because, like, hey, I mean, you can't throw a steel keg underwater, so... That's, like, the one thing I don't like about that gimmick. It, like, gives away the locations yeah. of the DK coins yeah. for water levels. Every like... underwater level will just be right there at the very end. Yep. Now time for the boss of these, this world, uh, Squirt, Squirt Showdown. Uh, this boss is kind of creepy, but... Uh... You mean Jar Jar Binks? Oh, I can't unsee it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so the gimmick here is just to uh, squirt him in the eyes. Uh, that's pretty much it. It's really not too much going on. Uh, there is a slight amount of randomness as to when he opens his eyes. We're talking like maybe frames, but it doesn't matter at all, really. Yeah, like apparently it has to do it has to do with uh, when he blinks. Yeah. I was feeling really excited and validated about all the times that I missed until you said it doesn't really matter, it's just frames. So <laughs> <laughs> And 
hopefully we'll be grabbing uh, doing optimal ski grab where he grabs the ski on the top ledge rather than the uh, the bottom ledge. This is insane tech. Oh, a better insane ski grab. Little a better ski grab than Blunt Bunny. Yep. <laughs> I'm getting the big thumbs down. So I did I did that during the trilogy relay um, in 2017. 2017. 2017. Then, I, I said you, that out then, loud, and I just immediately got owned in the next level. Like just. And then you got owned. Yeah. Without without question, just immediately died. The self jinx. Basically. So we're upgrading our vehicle here. Going to be turbo ski, which will be our main vehicle for pretty much the rest of the run. So uh, nice honking. Things Very honking. efficient. Yep. Now it's time for Crevis Creepers. Uh, this song's pretty good. Mm -hmm. One of the best in the game for sure. Yeah. So even though uh, Kitty is slower jumping up horizontal ropes, it's better to do Kitty in front for this level. Yeah, and there's, uh, I think, four different reasons for that. One is this next bonus coming up. He's going to have the enlarged hitbox and reflect the stars easier. Uh, the other is that he'll be able to get the DK coin faster than Dixie would be able to. And also you're going to need his team throw in two spots. Uh, one to go into an up barrel, which is just saves a little bit of time, and also to even access the second bonus second you need bonus, to do a yep. team throw. So even though this level's like kind of built for Dixie, you do have to use Kitty in 103 for the first half. Yeah, it's actually something I routed out forever ago. I was surprised when I saw the savings. Mm -hmm. So the way to get this DK coin is pretty cool. You're going to put the steel keg in the behind of this coin. Got so, it. I didn't think that was going to work. I didn't either. I was just <laughs> going to stop surprise. And just uh, do a team throw here. I don't even know like what the intended way to get that DK coin is, but uh, that's really like, cool. You're going to throw it up. And you have to up throw yeah, it, it's yeah. Really, it's actually probably harder than what he just yeah. did. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That goes for a lot of stuff in this game. It's like the intended strat is like, even harder than just doing the speed awesome, strat. Yeah. If you switch to Dixie, you can see how quickly she's going to jump ropes. Yeah, and we'll be using Dixie for the rest of the stage, so you will be... She just speeds yeah. the ropes. Dixie was meant for, meant for horizontal ropes, pretty much. So I think we can get a quick donation before the end of the level. All right, we have $25 from Liam Atlas, who says, rolling in, Liam. good luck, Void, with this awesome run, and shout-outs to the great couch. Roll unfathomably deep. And again, shout-outs again to the couch, I agree. Yeah, shout-outs to the couch. And thank you, Liam. Thanks, I have been seeing nothing but compliments and love, by the way, for this couch since y'all started doing commentary. So great awesome. job. Awesome. That's a nice backup, by the way, to a Fixer Kong order. Thank you, yeah. So there he's uh, just skipping past the buzz in order to enter the first bonus. The optimal strat here is to do some team throws, but uh doesn't need to do that. You can just jump straight on the knickknack, yeah. so very nice. And the rest of the level is just an auto scroller. Yep. So oh. More donations. More donations. And a new balloon jump. More donations? We can I'll try. Do that. $25 from George, who says, saw the awesome prizes and I couldn't help but donate. Haven't seen much Sonic 06, but hoping to see some today. Go get that 103 void. And speaking of which, again, we're about 2,200 away from Sonic 06. So if you want to see that run, and trust me, it's something you're going to want to see. What is it? Is it silver out. in this, in Sonic 06? Uh, Sonic, Sonic 06, so what, sorry, what Silver story? Or is it, what's the run for Sonic 06? I do not believe one was specified quite Oh, yet. interesting. Yeah. We have $5 from Lime Fiasco who says, Rollin' Deep. Rollin' Deep. Rollin' Deep. The Master DS186 donates $10, saying, Looking forward to seeing the great game of DKC3. Will be good to see a 103% run for the first time at a GDQ. Honk. Honk, honk, honk. Yo, speaking of animal buddies, espresso's a good one. Do, do ostriches honk? Do, do you guys know if ostriches honk? Is that a thing? They do? They okay. do? Okay. Okay. Nice. I don't know. What kind of sound would you say an ostrich makes? Yeah, just espresso. You had another level with the uh, DK coins just right there at the very end. Ideally, looks, you're supposed to take it with you, but you can just like throw it and just walk along with it. Walk faster. so slowly while carrying a barrel. Yeah, it's something yeah. we haven't mentioned. Like uh, one reason why it was faster in the last level to have Kitty is because when Kitty is holding a steel keg, he moves faster than when. when he Dixie... moves at like normal walking speed. Yeah, but Dixie's really slow. Dixie's really slow. Whoa! Ooh. <laughs> the classic man. Ledges. Yeah, fortunately, you can just jump uh, when you're sliding down a ledge in this game. 
Uh, so this uh, DK coin is pretty interesting. He's going to throw the steel keg at the wall. It's going to bounce off and take out the coin. Yep. I think ideally he's supposed to throw the tin, well not ideally, but the intense stress to throw the tin can, like fall it all Just the way down. follow it, yeah. That's yeah. really slow. Well, coming up is one of the worst bonuses in the I entire game. I think it's the worst one. This bonus is garbage. Yeah. So oh, yep. This is a green banana bonus. Uh, it lags a lot. And the weight on these barrels. Sometimes the green bands just be like out of reach. And Spawns are real bad. Mm -hmm. And the barrels have bad hitboxes. Yes, yeah. yeah, so you can just like fall off. Previously, we'd used the uh, Dixie for this bonus because her glide is kind of useful, but uh, Kitty's like a little bit more optimal because of his hitbox and just the way he jumps off the barrel. Yeah, yeah the jumping jump mechanic better, I mentioned yeah. earlier. It wasn't too bad, yeah. 14 is pretty decent. Pretty good. We'll be doing another team throw here to uh, skip a portion of the level. It's going to be a lot of team throws in this level. Yeah, yeah. This, this level this is pretty broken. Throw the level. Yeah. yeah. It's also Kong swap the level in 103. Yep. Yeah, you swap your Kongs pretty often. Yeah, this run's pretty cool. You go back and forth between uh, Dixie and Kitty a lot because of their different abilities and also the damage boost and all that. Here's going to be swapping a specific spot because if he doesn't, uh, there's a chance the barrel will despawn that leads into this uh, second bonus. It's really weird. But as long as you swap in that spot, it's always fun. This bonus is also kind of tough to do optimally. Uh, Back to Kitty. You want to do as like low jumps as possible and just uh, try and climb without falling down. Well, I'm decent. Yeah, decent. Pretty good. That was okay. I think 13 is awesome. You have to have like really uh, optimal jumps. You have to be a god. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, hardest trick in the game coming. Yeah, hardest trick in the game where you team throw onto a barrel, onto another barrel. So hard, man. This oh, guy yep. who did it. Oh, oh, oh god. Oh, oh. And oh. Insane save. Woo! One jump for a spike. Ah, oh, dang. Yeah. You can do a two-one jump there. It saves one second, but that's the nice thing about this category as well. Uh, the two-one jump. It's a frame-perfect trick where you get more height off of a uh, team throw jump, but it's really not useful at all in this category. Whereas it's very useful in eight percent. But it's nice to like, not have to worry about one place tricks. like Spoopy where we had it. And we even got rid of it. Yeah. So he's doing a team throw there to get two uh, bear coins. We're almost done with the bear coin route, Wait, actually. Are we getting four more or are we getting five more? Four? Oh, uh, there's a backup one in this one, but since I got the one in Logi, I might skip it. Okay. Or I might do the robbery at 54. Okay. So this That's is the uh, crack shot croc. This is the obligatory uh, squitter level of the uh, the run. Much easier than the uh, webwoods in DKC2, yeah. for sure. Oh, yeah. The gimmick here is the uh, target following you and shooting at you, which doesn't really affect you much in the speed run. You're always going to run it, but... Also, this bonus is very strange, because again, there's just nothing like here to challenge you. My theory is that the uh, the croc was supposed to be in this bonus, but maybe they couldn't figure out how to get, like, get it working, so it's just you jump around and get green bananas, and that's it. Also, every green banana in this bonus is a unique spawn, so it's very hard to predict. So here we're going to be doing uh, what Void mentioned earlier, where you can jump in between the, the big bats. Is it on a hitbox in the middle? Oh, hello? Not. Oh, yeah, so the way uh, webs work in this game is that you have to delay them for at least one frame your L and R press in order to form the web. Unlike in DKC2, where you can press L and R at the same time, so. Jesus, okay. Make, making uh, webs can be a lot yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I was expecting to die on the previous pool, actually, so. <laughs> It's a bit unfortunate that we have to redo the It's a pretty tight stage. jump to uh, make it from the edge to the middle. You kind of have to like be falling off a little bit already when you jump. Yeah, so obviously he's not going to have to redo the bonuses or anything like that. Once you've done a bonus, you've done it forever, so. Now you can do up and one. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot easier to do it when you're not coming out of the bonus. Yeah, when you have momentum. Yeah. There we go, so, easy. Remember during your percent training, it's good. It's unfortunate you died like right before midway as well. Yeah. I guess I guess there, I guess there was a sign for me to get this bear coin. All right, there we go. <laughs> All, right. All right. So now we're in the second half of the level. We're doing another D boost here, and uh, this is a D boost jump, up double jump. Yeah. I'm not sure what the name is actually. Yeah, I've seen it as well in DKC too. Of course, you get hit. If you get damage while you're an animal buddy, you have a few frames where you can press B and get another jump in the air. Yeah, this section can be a little bit scary. There's a red buzzer regarding the entrance to the uh, second bonus, but we don't have any issues. Fine. And coming up is one of the most unique bonuses in the entire run. Definitely you're not playing the most as an animal bonus. or a yeah. Kong, we're playing as a crosshair. And uh, the objective is just to take out all the baddies as the crosshair. There is a bit of a delay on the shot, so you can't just uh, rapid fire. But ideally, you can just uh, take them all out without missing a shot. Very nice. nice. Well done. 31 is what you want to see. Yep. Not an AM on this one. Yeah. <laughs> this is actually my favorite.
favorite song in the game. It's a good one. It's a good one. All right. So yet again, uh, the coin is at the very end of the stage. Twitter becomes the steel keg, so you absolutely cannot miss the throw. You have to redo the entire stage. Very difficult. Very so, difficult throw, yeah. I've seen people miss that before, and then you have to redo the entire level. Shasta, Shasta conditioner. Yeah. Oh. We're just exposing everybody today. <laughs> everybody has terrible mistakes. Yep. All right, bonus right away here in Lemguin Lunge. Then we're doing a buffer jump into a roll, and that will give him a good setup to roll through the Lemguin and speed the bonus optimally. Not too difficult, but yeah. uh, it is possible to fail. These it. enemies have some really odd hitboxes. Yeah, Lemguin hitboxes are pretty To say the least. Yeah. Very questionable. Pretty infamous. Uh, for just like randomly hitting you, even though you jumped off them perfectly. Here's going to be doing an intentional deboost to get rid of Kitty, and this will reduce lag because. And also, two iframes gets that fair point. Yeah, uh, again, it's another level. Oh, okay, you're going to be doing. Yeah, no, no neon. Because of the death. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. There's a trick you can do where you can just instant drop the steel keg, and it saves like nothing, of course, but it looks kind of cool. Does a little wiggle there to time uh, with this, the spawn of the lemon coin, so we can roll through it. Mm -hmm. 54, that'll be the last bear coin we get of the front. That should be enough. How Lemquins work is you can roll through them or like any, if you touch them at all while they're coming out of the hole, you kill them. But pretty much otherwise, if you touch them, you die, even if you jump on them. Good Ooh, entry, nice. Well Optimal glide, yeah. yeah. That's a bit harder than it looks. It's another bonus where you're forced to use uh, Dixie to collect the stars for optimal routing. Difficult. Uh, 14's not too bad. Yeah. yeah. Ideally, you can get a 15, but it doesn't yeah. really matter too much. Safety right. Kong there, yeah. This is yeah, I, I didn't grab a halfway, so I was like, eh. This is a really, really dangerous section. Yeah, I don't want to lose a minute if I can avoid it. Ah, oh, dang, no sub one Baron. Right, another Banana Bird Cove. I think this is our last chance for Ayaya, probably. Dang. Uh -huh. dang. Or we can still get it, it just won't be in a five. In the five, yeah. yeah. Five input cove, yeah. Because I think it doesn't matter the specific cove, it's the more you do, the higher count. Yeah. yeah. It's it's the more the more Based banana the birds you have, yeah. 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 You have, yeah. Second bear of the run, same as Blizzard's got a present for us, which we'll be giving to a bear later on in the run. And that's it. That's all Blizzard does for us. Now it's time for the boss of world five, bleak. Uh, who's this guy? Yeah, who's this guy? Never seen this guy in Amberson before. Yeah. <laughs> I've spent a little more time with him than I'd like to. <laughs> Hello? The other wonky hitbox. An NAM. So, yeah, obviously an 8%, you can do a bleak skip, and you just uh, die and press start on the right frame, and you skip the boss. But in 103, you do have to fight him because you want his bonus coin. But also, we're playing on the North American version where bleak skip doesn't work. So, yeah, we just you have to fight him out of work. Yeah, there's, there's some trade offs. Like, um, the stuff in World 8's not doable. There's the one cycle with chaos that's not doable. In yeah, for J. North American okay. exclusive stuff. Yeah, North American in general is just lifts. much faster for this category. Yeah. Also, you uh, leave the bears' uh, houses faster on North American. Yeah. And just in general, a lot more glitches are, work on the NA version. Banana yeah, Japanese version. Also, okay, you, Japanese. It wasn't too big of a jerk right there. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, his spawns are random. The first, second, and fifth spawns, I believe. So he did not go into the unhittable corner, right? Yeah. yeah. The front row and the bottom left is the unhittable spot. And if you get that, it sucks. You have to wait it out and lose a few seconds. All right, so after this, your, all our hard-earned bear coins are going to be paying off because we're going to be going back to, uh, or going to Bizarre Shop for the first time and purchasing some items. So this is, uh, the bear coin route is structured the way it is, so you can only make one visit to Razor Ridge. In the past, you would have to make a second visit on the way back after World 8. But here, we're going to be getting the mirror and the shell early. Uh, and also we're going to be robbing the bear. So the shell costs five coins, the mirror costs uh, 50 coins, but we might have 54 coins. So what we're going to do, we're just going to mash our hearts out and buy both at once as the coins stick down. That's very nice. And uh, yeah, it's kind of like uh, as, as the coins go down, you still have them. So as long as you just mash at an adequate enough speed, you can as buy stuff. As long as you that say you're going to buy the shell when the counter is above five, you can buy it. Yeah. Yes. So we're delivering the present to Blue. Blue's birthday is actually January 16th, so if I could get a happy birthday, Blue, from everybody, that would be really great. He... Thank you, guys. He he thought everybody had forgotten his birthday, and it turns out that Blizzard was just in, in a blizzard, I guess. He was, he was stuck. I don't know. I Being lazy. He's just chilling. Just chilling. Yeah, so that's part of the trade sequence, which will inevitably uh, lead us to another banana bird. Here we're going to open up the Lost World Kermitoa 
but we're not going to go into it yet. That's still going to happen at the end of the run because we need to get all the bonus coins first. Uh, the reason we're opening it earlier is to do an RNG manipulation of sorts, which we'll explain later. Yeah, so we go in that uh, much later. And yeah. this is uh, the final bear before we go into our next level. Bar to the bear. We're going to be trading the mirror for the wrench. And the wrench is what we need in order to access the banana bird cave of World 6. So Barter tries to rip you off. The mirror is, I think it's supposed to be used with the, is it the guy outside of World 2? Like, uh, World 7. World se it is World yeah. 7, yeah. And we're like, we don't, we don't need his hint. We know, we know what the mirror, what's read by the mirror. So yeah. We just, we just laugh at him and walk off. Right, so this is Buzzer Barrage. This is the uh, clocks focus level. We'll be playing as him for pretty much the entire level. Some very uh, tight skips uh, in this stage, Ooh. going between the copters and the buzzes. Copters especially have kind of weird hitboxes. Yeah. This bonus is among the longest in the entire game. It's not too difficult and it's pretty straightforward, but it just takes a while to take out all the buzzes with clocks. Ideally, you'd want to get like a 32 or 33 here. Very good. good. Yeah, Quox is pretty excited to be upgraded from midpoint turret. He got, yeah. a, he got a promotion in this game. Yeah, the uh, mechanic is pretty cool where you just grab the barrels and just try and throw them on the people, I guess. We're going to actually uh, be beating the DT or the, the coin with Quox yes. at this level. Yeah, you think uh, the coin would be at the very end here, but no, Quox <laughs> will be assisting us in defeating uh, or getting the DK coin. So yeah, also the stage contains a lot of damage boosts. Uh, typically, unless we say something, the taking uh, damage is going to be on purpose in order to skip uh, copter cycles, just go through buzzes or things like that. Here, the intense strategy is like go to the left and like wait for the copter to come down. You just like squeeze through the uh, bees, uh, grab the tin can, just take out the coin like that. And, uh, a few more uh, tight skips coming up. Like you're supposed to like the gimmick of this level is to just like take the barrel and take out all the buzzes with that, but you can just like squeeze through all of them. Uh, nice. Good movement. Good. Using iframes here to go through both uh, the buzz and the copter. Saves a lot. Yeah. Well done. This stage is not easy. Definitely one of the hardest levels in the run. Fun fact, if you get hit, there's actually an invisible Kong barrel at the bottom of that little cove that he just went through. So here yeah. we don't want to do a damage boost because we want to have both Kongs for this bonus. Yeah, yeah it, ma it makes that bonus much faster. Yeah, so the intense strat for this bonus coming up is that you're supposed to bounce on the copter and get the stars like that. But if you team up and bounce off the copter, you can throw Dixie to grab a line of stars as you descend. Yeah, so you can skip a cycle like that. Yep. And here you just do a team throw to finish it off. It's pretty much optimal, yeah. Nice, Jane. Thank you, Jeff. That strat was actually, like, uh, found by one of my old viewers. Uh, shouts to him wherever he is. Baron. 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 This is the only bear you see in 80%. Uh, this is uh, Benny the Bear. He's going to take us on a wild ride to the rest of World 6. And there it goes. <laughs> we, we have a little tradition on this level, right, Void? Yeah. So this level is called Burn Your Rope. As the name... It's it, definitely I, not Kong Fuse Cliffs, it's about Burn Your Rope. Burn yeah. Your Rope, yeah. yeah. And so yeah. we do an update on the run uh, during this level to kill some time. So Burn Your Rope update. If it wasn't for that death in Crackshot Krog, this run would be actually pretty sick. Yeah, this one yeah, would be really really good. It's still pretty sick. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. done great. Yep. All right, do we, have a, do we have a Burn Your Rope update from Sky? Absolutely. So you all wanted to know about the Sonic 06 category. It's going to be Silver Story, no MSG, and yes, I looked it up. That is the actual name of the category, so I'm sure there's going to be healthy. all sorts of memes about salt there. Very healthy. Anyways, we have a $500 donation from Scooter388. Who says, work once again prevents me from catching the Sonic Block Live, but at least I get to see some good DKC runs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We also have $30 from Bruddy Stack that says, hey, Void, Rolling in. Rolling in. My favorite Rolling in. Void quote with everyone. So it's a quote from Void. Thanks, Brady. Unless you die, you can never roll too deep. If you roll unfathomably deep and make it out alive, you live to roll deep another day. <laughs> Good luck on the run, buddy. Love, Brady. Thank you. Thanks, Brady. <laughs> So yes, and I'll scroll, not too much to say. Uh, you can speed it up a little bit by entering the bonuses as fast as possible. You saw Void like, enter the first bonus uh, pretty much as fast as you can. 
by just looking at a visual cue of where the buzzes are on screen. We'll be doing the same one or same thing for the second bonus coming up in a little bit here. Also, this uh, level used to be a great source of bear coins in the previous routes because, again, it's just an auto scroller. But we no longer have any more use for bear coins. But sometimes we'll like go in the barrels and get the bear coins to remind us of the uh, the old days. The old days. It's not like it loses any time or anything. How many words are in this level? Like seven? I don't think it was that many, but yeah, it was quite a bit. It was a lot. So. I hear six, so six sounds accurate. Yeah. I don't care about any bear coins though in this. Uh, Post World you, Five. Yeah, you, you only care you, you care about the money route. Exactly. Yeah, pretty good uh, optimal bonus entry. Yeah. Will you be donating any bear coins to the cause after this run? Uh, yeah. Your leftovers. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's also worth saying that if you fail a bonus in an auto scroller, especially like this level, you lose a lot of time. But the bonus is pretty easy. Whoa! Oh my was, gosh! <laughs> I was not paying attention. <laughs> almost, almost commentators first. <laughs> I did, I did to make it more dramatic. So my most embarrassing moment is getting to the end of this level and doing that exact thing at the top of the level and just not catching it. And yeah. I had to replay the entire back half of the level. I feel like it happens to all of us at least once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's a rite of passage. Yeah, so no surprise, the coins at the very end of the stage here. It's going to uh, be team throwing to get up there. I think you're supposed to like take the rope is the intended strategy. Yeah. Just a little bit throw to team throw. Uh, just a little faster team throw. Grab the DK coin, that's it. Shout out to the counter becoming blue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Now Baron. Being Baron. 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 Bjorn the bear gonna be giving, giving him his wrench. And this is basically what the bear coin route has amounted to. We did everything we did, getting all the bear coins in, uh, before World 6, so we can only make uh, one visit to this world. Again, in previous routes, you would do a second visit and would lose a lot of time. So getting all those uh, bear coins early is uh, time positive by like about 15 seconds. So the number of uh, inputs here increases to six. It's where it gets a little bit hard. This is where I would start writing it down because my memory is like awful, but Void will be pretty good to go until well, like, the end of the run. I, I, I can do the six input Ks without writing them down, yeah. All the all the memory power went to F of T? Yeah. Shout <laughs> out to an Anfus who memorizes them all. Carefully mention that, by the way. <laughs> anyway, it's time for Flood of the Fish. Uh, level of, the gimmick of this level is uh, you play as on guard. Uh, you want to, uh, well, ideally, you're supposed to hit the gleaming brames in order to make it brighter. But, uh, you know, we're speed running, so we know how to do that. Just be playing level in the dark, so it might be a bit hard to see. And uh, again, as we mentioned earlier, uh, On Guard is uh, really OP. I think there's only like two like frames of Lurchins where you can actually take damage. Other than that, On Guard will be plowing through absolutely everything. Yeah, so not only is it faster, but it's safer yep. to be lunging constantly. This bonus is cool. I like that bonus. Just because it makes like really clever usage of On Guard's lunge ability. Mm -hmm. Uh, back and forth. 20 is pretty good. I think this is the first time we see the super lunge, really. Uh, like one time in 4 1. Yeah, I did it in 4 1. Or I guess in 1 3. Yeah, like briefly. Yeah. There's uh, not too much to say. Probably have time for a donation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, sounds good. We have $10 from Mr. Zara the Man who says, just a friendly reminder that Crack Shack Croc is called Purple Strawberry Milkshake Factory. Oh, yeah. Also, roll deep and stay hydrated, which I know you've been doing throughout the run, Void. Yeah, stay hydrated. Stay hydrated. Oh, yeah. uh -oh. This section could be a little bit tough. Uh, even having the bonus, it's a little bit scary. All right, good. Oh, yeah. You probably won't uh, take any more damage the rest of the run, but I, I know I've taken damage a lot trying to get a nice second bonus. Yeah, I could have died easily there, but I was like, uh, eh, yeah, let's go for it. Some of the corridors, that it's really well timed to be those specific frames that'll hurt you, and you can just do some simple things like let up on the D-pad just just briefly, and it it yeah. seems you up pretty well. The ending is not free either here. There is a chance you could uh, take damage. This is a pretty safe way of doing it. Yeah, I'll... I'll... Yeah. yeah, all right. Nice. Su super safe. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so he has uh, Dixie here, which would be good for the uh, the next level. Just, again, oh, by the way, the peak points at the very end of the underwater level. There's a strat where you can, like, ride the tin can yeah. jump off the right last second. It looks really I, cool. I, I but... thought about doing it, but I haven't practiced it in a while, yeah. so... It doesn't really stay that much time. Yeah. But yeah, you need uh, Dixie in front here for the uh, the parrot skip. Oh, nice. Grabbing wow. the DK as well. That's optimal. Yeah. 
Like, ideally, we, you wouldn't have to do that, but that is the fastest backup. Mm -hmm. And yeah, doing this glide saves uh, about one second compared to uh, taking Squawks the Parrot. Uh, but yeah, we're in Pothole Pack now. Given this level is all the Animal Buddies at once. We didn't see Squawks, but we always see On Guard. On Guard isn't needed to uh, get uh, full completion in this level, but it's just faster to use him. You also see him in 8%. Right after Angar, we'll be switching to Kitty here in the water, because switching the water is faster. And we'll be riding on Ellie, and Ellie is required to get to the first bonus of this level. Kind of stall a little bit to not hit the bombs. Yeah, the, uh, the Kachukas are the name of that enemy. The bomb throwing Kachuka. guys. Yeah. So again, we're using uh, Kitty's large hitbox here to grab the stars. Going to be uh, continually uh, mounting and dismounting Ellie. Ooh. That's, that's, uh, that's a bit rough. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Ellie didn't want to jump. Heck, Ellie. Heck, Ellie. Now, previously, we'd use uh, Dixie and just glide and try to grab the stars, but using Kitty optimally is a bit faster. And time for the final animal buddy, which is uh, Squitter, or Shoes, as, shoes. as it were. Of course. And Squitter is required to access the second bonus here. Yeah, you can't even make it up with a 2 1 jump. Mm -hmm. You have to use Squitter. Uh, this bonus is Sorry. annoying. <laughs> yeah, it's another use of the uh, crying Dixie tech there to grab uh, green bananas as Kitty collects the rest of them. It's, the it's so easy to like lose a bonus because of being too greedy here, but I guess I got an amazing RNG. That's that was oh, wow. amazing. Good. Yeah, the hitbox on the bombs lingers for quite a bit, so you really have to wait out the explosions. Yeah, especially damage. there. Especially there, yeah. yeah. Also, if you take damage previously, previously in this level, you can't get the DK coin because you need two Kongs in order to uh, get up there. Something worth noting that Kachaka that almost bodied me after the bonus, uh, that got replaced on the Japanese version for whatever reason. Well, they put it back in GBA. SMH. All right, Ropey Rumpus. Uh, again, this is another rope level. You ideally, you'd be playing as Dixie, but the Kong order works out that you kind of need a uh, Kitty here because. Um, We'll be doing a damage boost after this first bonus to skip about uh, nine seconds of the level. Plus, uh, it's really not too bad just to use Kitty here. And this bonus like seems like it'd be hard because uh, Kitty jumps off a rope slower and there's like buzzes you gotta dodge, but it's really not that it's bad. It's really not that bad, yeah. It's the other bonus that's really scary. Nice. Doing oh, almost oh, the optimal nice. strat. Uh, what we would do in the past is you would uh, grab the TNT barrel and take out one of the buzzes like that. But if you're really good, you can just uh, skip taking TNT barrel at all. If you took a little bit of damage, uh, you won't be able to do the skip. It's not a humongous deal. Yeah. It'll be, uh, I tried going for optimal movement. Yeah, that's true. It's tough, though. Yeah, it is. This is one of the more well-hidden coins. Yeah, it looks like that pit would just take you, you know, to, uh, all the way to the bottom level. But no, it's just, that's where the DK coin is. And he's uh, staying as uh, Solo Dixie here to enter the uh, barrels faster as well. And he'll be getting a kitty back as an animal in the next stage, so no time's actually lost. Okay. We're seeing Perry here again. Perry's going to turn into the second bonus, which is really scary. Yeah, this bonus is a, it's a This is a really scary, scary bonus. One. If you fail it, if you, you fail it, have you have to, to uh, death warp, yeah. Yeah, because you actually can't backtrack through the bees. Also, the time variance in this bonus in particular is quite uh, large because if you get a bunch of green bananas on like one side, obviously that's optimal, but if you have to go back and forth a lot, then mm -hmm. you lose a lot of time. It's like maybe eight seconds of variance yeah, between the best like possible, that. worst possible. 19's good. Yeah, not too bad. I think I've seen 24, 25 is the best. If you get really, yeah, really You can get pretty lot. ridiculous times, yeah. Boss of World 6, Barbus Barrier, pretty similar to 80%. Um, the first phase has a bit of randomness to it. You want the Lurchins to spawn in a spot where you can just hit them right away. That's it's kind of a bad spawn. spot. It's really okay. the second spawn that matters the most, though. Yeah. yeah. That one's also kind of bad. Oh. Well, eh, that wasn't too bad. That's all right. That was all right, yeah. And for the second phase, uh, you're supposed to use the missile shells to target the lurchins, like they lock onto the on guard, and then you like direct them towards the lurchin barrier. But you can just like get inside of Barbos there. Well done. And uh, it's a little bit faster. And third phase is pretty straightforward. <laughs> yeah, the ideal strat, or not the idea, the uh, intended strat here is to like be on the bottom and dodge the uh, the insane uh, bullet hell there. <laughs> but you can just like stay up top and just keep hitting him and it's fine. Toho bullet hell. Yeah. And you get flushed out of World 6. 
literally. Alright, going to World 7, Chaos Core. Um, here's where they put in, like, all the gimmicks that were really, really, really annoying. <laughs> the, wor the worst gimmicks, yeah. Yeah, some of them aren't too bad. This first level is probably the most straightforward. Yeah, this, uh, this is a fun level. This, this level's pretty cool, fun. yeah. Conveyor rope clash, uh, the ropes are conveyors, and you just uh, hop on top of them. It's faster than just, you know, like, gliding over them or anything like that. It just moves you towards where you want to be going. I almost, my heart stopped for a second because I was in any percent mode. I was like, what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> This bonus is actually a lot more annoying than you would think. Yeah. Because uh, there's stars hidden in the trees, and it's very easy to, like, miss them. That was yeah. good, though. Yeah, that was good. Okay. Yeah, this uh, level can be a little bit scary, going between uh, the buzzes and trying to dodge all of them while you're moving faster on the conveyor ropes. But overall, it's not too bad. It's not too different in 103, just a few detours to get the stuff. It's actually, like, very similar. Yeah. Like, the the route is mostly levels. the same. Yeah, like, this is the movement you would want to do in 80%, like, uh, optimally, but there's a bonus in the way, so, like, a lot of, like, new runners will accidentally go on that bonus. I, how was anybody supposed to find that? There's, like, There's one, a banana. Yeah, one banana. Oh. Kind of, like, as an indication. The one in Coin Dozer is more hidden, I think. Uh, like yeah, I would agree, there. actually, yeah. I don't think there's an indicator for that one. I'm really excited for Coindo. This is a great level. Yeah. Great level. It's the best level in this game, according to Blueberry 26. That's his favorite, yeah. Yo, I, I know it's Josh's favorite level, too. My my boy Josh RTA in the upcoming... Oh, yeah, 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 like, yeah. He loves... He Coindo loves that level. Hi, Josh. Hi, Josh. Hi, Josh. <laughs> Just hanging out on the rope there to reduce a bit of lag. That was good. I thought we'll come up Creepy Caverns. This is uh, Yay. <laughs> a level with a lot of RNG. Yeah, if you like randomness, this is the level for you. So the, uh, the boo barrels, the ghost barrels, uh, which direction they face is random to a certain degree. They will eventually face the right way after a certain number of spawns. So like, it can't just keep facing the wrong way forever or anything like that. So ordinarily, since there's so many barrels in this level, we would want to play it with one Kong. But since we need both Kongs to go to the first bonus. Never lucky. Worst possible RNG for that one. Suck it up. Awesome. But he knew he was going to face the up left after the three. first three, yeah. Because that yeah. one's guaranteed to do that. They all have a maximum number of wrong directions before a correct direction. That's correct. And you need to add two Kongs yet to this bonus for the yeah. to do team throw. So basically, one. you want to do, you, wanna, you don't want to take damage on Barbos to carry uh, two Kongs up to this point. Yeah. It was levels uh, pretty great because there's even RNG in the bonuses with the Ghost Barrel. Yep. <laughs> Doing a two team throw strat there. It's a 28. 20. It's pretty good, yeah. Good. I mean, the only reason it wasn't optimal is because the RNG, so. Yep. Great execution. Rest levels. Well, up until the end, it's really straightforward. Well, you we will be getting a squitter here in order to access the second bonus. Gonna be doing a deep boost. Uh, faster to do that deep boost and also uh, sets your Kong order properly. Yeah, because you want uh, Dixie for yeah, the second good. bonus. Get in, a, get in a donation here, real quick. Absolutely. We have five dollars from Nyeran who says Baron. 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 Best of luck to my boy Void on his 103% run. Shout out to Goemon Legend Claude and the rest of the couch for providing their excellent commentary. Thanks, Nyron. So a bit of a precise gliding here to yeah, nice. make that first cycle optimal strat. Or not have to wait on it rather. He's picking up uh, Kitty again here because he's going to be doing a D-boost at the end of the level, and that will give him Kitty for uh, in front for Lightning Lookout. Uh, this in, uh, steel keg throw is kind of awkward. You have to like throw you it. You have to delay it. it a little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And you don't want the like best possible RNG for the final boo barrel because you can't actually can't make can't. that slide. You want the second possible spawn. No, overall, it was pretty good. Yep. Oh, it was not too bad. Here's where we uh, skip nading the mirror for the guy to tell us. Yeah, you're not going into Baffle's shape house. Here. You gotta do a figure eight around the rocks, enter sewer stockpile. Because, yeah, ideally you give uh, the mirror to Baffle and he, like, unlocks the, the, the clue, but we don't need that. You guys like the next level? It's a yeah, great, it's great level. I like it. 
the uh, most infamous level in this game. Lightning yeah, Lookout. Lightning Lookout. Lightning Lookout. So uh, well, recently I found out there is actually a bit of RNG after so many years of thinking there was no RNG in this level, but apparently there's like a small amount that dictates where it goes. But for the most part, the positioning of the lightning is dependent on the movement of uh, the Kongs. So you can kind of like influence where it's going to be and predict where it's going to be. Yeah, it's very important to have consistent movement here. Yeah, and lightning can strike the water, and like if you're anywhere in the water, you'll take damage. Yeah, that's why I stalled a little bit so that I want, I want to make sure the lightning would strike into that small pond because I've had that happen to me before. Yep. And I would like to keep two Kongs up to uh, the DK coin section because I'm here to do a deep boost. Can I do a little deep boost here? Faster, yeah. Yeah, the intended strat is to uh, have the lightning hit the uh, bounty bird and or booty bird. Like, bird. The yeah. booty bird. The, fir <laughs> the first one will give. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. It's, it's a bounty bass and booty bird. Yeah, yeah. I always yeah. do those two mixed So, up. like, you're supposed to hit the first bird that gives you a barrel so that you can hit the second bird, which gives you the tin can. And then I guess you die because you get bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could have been due to the RNG. Probably was. But yeah. I think so. I've had that happen to me before, but like, yeah, so sometimes it doesn't happen. Most of the time so, it doesn't happen. Another mechanic with the lightning is that anytime you take damage or pick up a DK barrel, you stall the lightning for a brief bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like, there's a lot of deep boosts in this level, so that you stall it both on the damage nice. and on getting the comp back. So hopefully we'll see the uh, strat here. Also, just like in Bomb Barrel Brawl, we're going to throw the steel keg. It's going to bounce off the wall. Let the coins not spawn. All right, got the mid floor. Good. <laughs> We're good now. And uh, bounces off the wall and takes them out. All right. Yeah, so I'd say the second half of the stage is a bit easier than the first half. Oh, yeah. You'll be doing I a D-boost coming up here intentionally to get through the, uh, the buzzes and entering the second bonus. Oh. Uh -oh. It's a bit roll. of a tight roll good, there. Yeah. You have to repress Y after the roll finishes. Yeah. Which you have a pretty small window for there. Okay. This bonus looks uh, pretty pretty scary, but if you jump in a certain way, you can kind of get the lightning to spawn on the right or left side, so it's not actually striking you in the center. So you can just kind of grab the, uh, the green banana. The lightning spawn is like based on your movement. It tries to predict where you are. So if you just jump back and forth, you kind of keep it in one place. Yeah, like it thinks it could be on nice. the far right or far nice. left. It's good. Right. Instant D boost right here. We'll be playing the rest of the level uh, as Dixie. Intentionally pausing there to fix the lightning cycle. It's pretty good to me. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Not too bad. Just got owned. Got, got owned, yep. <laughs> that was bad luck. That's fine, though. Right, here's Coin Dozer. Coin Dozer. So all the coins that we took out uh, previously in the run, they're getting bad. all the DK coins, yeah, they, they've assembled an army and they're here to take out the and Kongs. And they turned pink. And they turned pink, yeah. So uh, yeah, the uh, the way these guys work is like kind of weird. Like sometimes you like jump in them and just push you off anyways. It's you want to like jointed. land on them. You want to be pretty centered, like right on top. Yeah. If you're a little bit off, then you'll be angled and they'll bump they'll you. They'll kind of cut through them and bounce. Mm -hmm. And they'll bump you right into a pit, or they chase you, and it's really hard to recover. It's another bonus for some of these stars are hidden in the trees, so they can kind of hard to grab. This is a level you do not want to play with Kitty. Yeah. On. Kitty at Coin Dozer is not, not, not fun. It's much easier to land centered on them with Dixie's gliding. It's something. <laughs> oh. oh, cool. So I think the intent is to, try to do a team throw off of the coin and the bonus barrel, but optimally you can just uh, glide onto the recoil and bounce on the bonus barrel that way. This is a bonus where a green banana prediction can really help you out because there's only going to be four green bananas that spawn on the right side, so you just like keep an eye out for those and uh, kind of like stick to the left. It's actually yeah, really four. weird because it buys to the left by a fair bit. It was 23. That's, that's really good. good. Yep. Yeah, like the old strategy, just like bounce, you know, go back and forth between them. But if you yeah. keep track of uh, how many green bananas that spawn, you can optimize your movement. Nice optimal strat there. Just the blue. I did the switch barrel again to change the bazooka shot from regular wooden barrel to steel keg. Just do a few flights at the end there. Yep. They nice, don't nice actually, things. the coins don't actually come after you if you're right at the very edge. So you can get up pretty safely there. 
<laughs> poisonous pipeline. So uh, the controls are reversed in this level whenever you're in the poison pot or, or water. Specifically, left and right are reversed. But you know, if you're a speedrunner, it doesn't really matter too much. It's basically just another uh, underwater level. And he'll be uh, going into the first bonus that will give him on guard, and that'll make uh, the rest of the first half of the level pr uh, pretty straightforward. Yeah. You would get on guard even 8%, but you would get him from a, like a specific on guard barrel. Here you just go into the bonus and become on guard automatically. Yeah. And getting on guard normally in that level is pretty tricky. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is another bonus that would be hard if uh, you're using like DKC2 on guard or something, but DKC3 on guard has no issues. We'll be doing a uh, uh, full uh, charge here to uh, go, f go fast. Go, go, go fast. fast. Overdue. Go fast. Yeah. Not too much to say here. You probably read another donation. Yeah. Guess I'm halfway. All right, we have halfway. we have twenty five dollars from Namu. He says one of the few times a year I get to see Void in colors. Sadly, won't be there in person this year. But good luck on the run and big shout outs to the DKC community. Void, okay. Thanks, man. Yeah, another another great shout out to the makeup makeup artist for getting Void all set up to be in color here today. <laughs> She's doing a fantastic job back there. Yeah. A uh, quick Sonic 06 update as well. We are currently 1,300 away, Ooh, so 34,706 out of 36,000. So please, if you have not gotten those donations already and you want to see Sonic 06, please get those in. It doesn't really matter if you take damage there. You would just swap to Kitty here. Well, it's, it's scarier. <laughs> yeah, it's squeeze between the Lurch and... Uh, you don't really lose any time from it, though. You yeah, have enough iframes to get past the three, like, vertical uh, Lurchins, but the two right before the bonus, yeah. they kind of have to be careful. Yeah. Also, in that bonus, you swam counterclockwise because... Uh, because it's faster. It is. <laughs> specifically, Kitty has to swim to, like, a, a specific spot in the bonus in order to actually exit the yeah. bonus. If you swim counterclockwise, you're closer to that exit spot. Mm -hmm. Alright, it's time for a rematch with Chaos. And the final level of World 7, obviously. Yeah. It's a pretty similar to 8%. Well, it's basically identical to 8%. Basically identical, yeah. Basically identical. Technically, K. Rule's speech is different on the North American version, but. Hey, you did it, you beat Chaos. Yay! Wow! Wow, you did it. I think, like, in the lore of this game, Chaos is supposed to be, like, the, the big the bad guy. Yeah. But, you know someone else behind the scenes you can kind of see him there in the curtain i won't spoil who it is but ignore the green man behind the, the curtain we can't we're not even gonna look at him yeah huh. <laughs> we'll pick the suspense up who could it possibly be in a donkey kong game he's got he's got gloves this is still a little bit of green no idea no way no way oh my god oh my god, god. no way Carol's back, scientist now or something. I, I don't know. But in this game, he's named Baron K. Rowenstein. Yep. Strat here is uh, hit him in the back with barrels. Got to pull these uh, things down to make the barrels appear. Levers. Yeah, he's Hitting got that. some like propeller thing. Got to take out the propeller, I Optimal guess. hit there. Yeah, hitting K. Roll before he turns around on that cycle saves just a little bit of time because it's more about how, how many times he bounces. I yeah, think, he, than... yeah, he bounces against the wall four times. So if you hit him before you touch the wall, that counts as a perform. Yeah, after this hit, he's going to be going for a trick called uh, Task K. Roll, where he's going to be doing a somewhat precise glide to grab the lever and get an early barrel cycle. It's a five frame window, but it can be kind of tricky. You got Good. It. Well done. Yeah, very nice. nice. Yeah, it saves about five seconds to do it like that. And last phase is pretty straightforward, but <laughs> I've yeah. been messing it up recently, so... You can jump too early and just kind of, like, ram into yeah. K-Roll. Yeah, it's easy to jump at the wrong time. Awesome. Oh, nice. nice. All right. So here we got to wait out this cutscene here for it to save the game, and then we will hard reset to skip the credits. Yeah, this entire cutscene is much faster than the North American version, which is one of the main reasons why, again, it's done on the NA version. I didn't know that. It's yeah, like, it's like 20-ish seconds. Yeah, it's yeah. a big deal. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So I guess I'll talk a little bit about the RNG manipulation that will be coming up. So we're going to do a hard reset here after this cutscene, which is going to reset the RNG back to its default state. And how it works is basically while you're in the overworld, every few frames it'll advance the RNG. And so with good boat movement, we can get into Crematoa to the first stage 
at roughly the same time anytime we Meme cranky, by the way. And that will ensure that the green banana patterns in that level will be known to void. Yeah, unless they really, get the boomer skip. Yeah. Which is really important because that stage has three bonuses, all of which are green bananas. All right, so you have to reset there because uh, you want to start playing as soon as possible. It, the game auto saves as soon as the credits start, so. Honk. 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 That was a good one. So b before he gets into the first level, uh, we're going to be, he's going to be attempting a trick called Boomer Skip here. So the gimmick with Kramatoa is that all the levels are blocked by these rocks, and Boomer the Bear uh, will charge you the bonus coins to blow up the rocks. Oh, thanks. I guess I should talk a bit about uh, like how the bear skips work and whatnot. So the bear skips were thought to be like tasked only for the longest time, but um, recently uh, a Super Mario Brothers three runner by the name of Louie came up with a technique where you just kind of like slide your ring finger and pointer finger yeah. on the controller this to give it the input needed. Because what you have to do is you have to press B for exactly one frame, let go B for exactly one frame, and then just press B again. And that lets you uh, skip the yeah. the bear. Just so you would. Yeah. Just what the skip does specifically is you walk out before he finishes pressing the button. And that stops the counting down of the bonus coins, so you can actually re-enter his house with more than 25 coins remaining, which is what he charges to open the fifth level. But since we didn't get to skip, uh, oh. we'll have to complete the first four stages and beat their bonuses to get up to the 25 coins needed to open the fifth stage. Yeah, again, so uh, he can pretty much predict the the spawns of the green banana bonuses. The first one's like kind of weird because sometimes the first one won't be in the right spot, but yeah. the second and third one should always be the same. So you're going to see like a hopefully an optimal iteration of this. Also, the ideal or the intense strategy is to use squawks for this bonus, but uh, using squitter is much faster, especially if you're RNG manipulating. Oh. Yeah, oh. And doing the, the manip saves something like yeah. 15 seconds in this stage. It's, yeah, something like that. You save like five seconds per bonus. Yeah. Yeah, like. You can see how fast he was able to go just because he knew where the green bananas were going to be. Nice little swag web shot there. Yep. <laughs> Ooh. I, I love that shot. Yeah, now it's time for an escort mission here in Stampede Sprint. So <laughs> yeah. you got to keep Perry alive. Perry is very, very, very important. Like, so even though it's essentially not a scroller, if Perry dies, you have to redo the entire stage because Perry will be turning into the third bonus. But this is the first stage where we have uh, three bonuses instead of two. This, yeah, it's Karmato. Another question for the host. Who's your favorite Animal Buddies guy? Well, based on Winky, how you all have Winky, talked about Winky. it, based on the based on the chat, I'm Intentional thinking Winky. Most okay. likely. That's what I like to hear. Yeah. No, no peer pressure or anything. I just got that feel from y'all on the couch too. <laughs> totally unbiased, like uninfluenced answer. I, I like it. Yeah. That last section right there with the red buzzer is very uh. Uh, mean if you don't know he's coming up because it's typically Perry will just die on him if you don't know to jump. You actually don't have to jump over any of the green bees, only the red ones. Hmm. This would be another bonus where the RNG is uh, fully predicted. This is actually a really scary bonus if you don't know. Yeah. Because there are four bananas that will spawn on top of the bee and those ones in particular are bad because if Perry gets hit by the bee you fail the bonus immediately. Mm -hmm. And you have to replay the entire stage. There's no halfway. 24? Awesome. 24. Yeah, without the manip, you, like, 18 is a good time, so it's yeah. like a lot of time. Yeah, very nice. Stampede Sprint's, like, a big source of potential time loss just because it is an auto-scroller. Mm -hmm. The rest of the levels hopefully won't be that bad. But coming up is Criss Cross Clips, my favorite level too. in the entire game, because uh, it features uh, quite a few zips. Void won't be going for all of them, but uh, similar to the team throwing eruption zips we saw earlier on in uh, Riftstyle Rage and all that, you can actually throw uh, Dixie into a steel keg and... Uh, manipulate the camera so that you get zipped up. You can kind of like chain oh. those. Oh, uh -oh. kind of chain those zips together. Also, to talk about this bonus. This uh, is the go. most prominent use of the crying Dixie tag. Hard bonus, like right here. Yeah, this is the most broken stage in the run. You can zip everywhere. You can do these team throws, which he'll be doing shortly. This level is actually a big reason why we're playing on you. So the yeah, like is... they fix like pretty much everything. Jabby's version. You can't uh, do the zips in the stage. You can't do yeah. skips like that. You can't do anything fun, basically. The gimmick is that you have these red bees that block the barrels that you used to climb, and you're supposed to switch them to TNT in order to kill the bee to then progress. But it's not coded properly. You can just team throw past it, and the barrels on again. Yeah, so he'll, this will be the first that the boy will be going for. 
Okay. Nice. Oh, Yeet. boy. This is another fairly well hidden DK coin, I think. Nice, very, very nice team throw pass. Again, you can be doing a lot more zips uh, than Void is showing off, but uh, they really don't see it that much. Like basically, almost every section you can zip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Second bonus is not easy either. Uh, he's probably gonna be going for the optimal strat where you like hold right after being the second nick back. Oh. oh. <laughs> try and like bounce off, and sometimes that happens. Really bad to fall. You climb really slowly in this bonus for some reason. Uh, there you go. Yeah, the, Lucky 13. <laughs> the hitbox of the knickknacks can be a bit uh, cruel sometimes, so better be safe there. Just to take damage. Yeah, and there he had to. Yeah, I have to go to the right to spawn the tin cans. Yeah, because like after you beat the second bonus, like they're just not even firing anymore, so you kind of have to go to the right. Mm -hmm. Oh, final zip. Here. Oh, we'll see it. Somehow just barely missed it. There we go. There we go. Yeet. Awesome. That B skip in particular, where you team throw past it, is more difficult than the other ones. Yeah. So. This tip's actually really useful. All right, Tyrant Twin Tussle featuring a unique enemy called the uh, Cuff and Clap. Cuff and Clap. Yes. Okay. Make a very cool noise when they're defeated by uh, Squitter. And we're going to be uh, getting Squitter mostly to access the, uh, the DK coin, but uh, listen to the sound effect. <laughs> so good. Honk. <laughs> So good. Yeah, right, he needs this. Twitter not actually web lotto. Web He's lotto? Not. No, it's not. So you did it web lotto! Web lotto! Woo! Yeah, you're supposed to create a bridge of uh, web platforms there to get the steel keg to hit the coin. And also, you have Squitter for this bonus, which is uh, quite nice because you can take out the only opposition in this bonus because you have a projectile. 14. Decent. He's going to be doing uh, one last uh, final web shot here to take off the, uh, the cuffing clouds. So I do one, but it dispatches both of them. Yeah, because they're stacked when they're off screen. Yeah, oh. so it hits one. Ugh. Right squeeze. Oh, I see they're just both together, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hits them before they're on screen. So D-boost here because it's faster, and once again, it fixes my con order. Yeah, and you want Dixie for sure for this next bonus so you can uh, glide over the, the enemies. Nice 30. So here, he's going to move very slightly to the left. No, actually, like, I just have to be neutral. Oh, right. You can either go neutral or face okay. left, but you don't want to be holding right, otherwise yeah. you'll spawn the uh, Cuff and Clouds early, and then they'll be on a bad cycle and you'll die. Yeah. All right, this is the jump, right? This is it. Got nice. Oh, man. Easy trick. Awesome. So you really don't want to take damage there. It doesn't look too bad, but you have to use the uh, the Crying Dixie tech for this bonus in order to occupy one of these three spawns. Yeah, you lose a lot of time yeah. here. Yeah. You can lose up to, like, 20 seconds. Depending on the RNG. Mm -hmm. Basically, having Dixie in this bonus makes it playable. <laughs> so. Yeah, you only have to worry about the right side and middle spawns. Yeah. There you go, pretty standard. Yeah, you can get a 37 if you get like insane RNG, yeah. but. Oh, not bad, not bad. That's good. That's good. All right. Coming up is Swoopy Salvo. This is uh, definitely one of the hardest levels arguably in the run. Level. Yeah, arguably. It doesn't look that bad. It's just Swoopy's coming at you, but there's like there's so many of them, man. They spawn <laughs> infinitely, and it's really hard to not and get hit. And the zips to make it even yes, harder. Yes, there's also uh, two zips in this level. So yeah, this is a uh, half Squawks, half Kong. This is the Squawk oh, Hat. Oh, oh, NA. NA, I'm dude. So I'll make the next section uh, pretty, sc pretty, pretty interesting, scary. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna have to game hard. So yeah. here it you're makes that bonus this, slower too. If I had both Kongs though, I could team throw from this swoopy unbearable. that I'm on right now. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't save too much, but yeah, like a second or two. All right. Well, so good luck with this. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, there's gonna be a lot of swoopies coming at you. Normally you have two Kongs here, so you can take a hit, but it's not you line that up bad. right against the edge of the hole. You can just go straight up. Nice little trick there. Nice. He's good. Uh, All right. I worst, think we're in the clear. Yeah, worst is over. That, yeah. that shot in the swoopy as he's coming right at you is so scary, but yeah. he's able to do it no problem. This is another scary bonus. Yeah, final green banana bonus of the run. Uh, I think there's three in the left spawn here. Ooh. Pretty good RNG. Ooh. Ooh, 29. 29. 29. Uh, really good. Awesome. I've yeah. never had a 29 before, so. 
Marathon luck. Okay. Yeah, take a bit easy. You're normally yeah. you're supposed to have Kitty there, and it's a bit easier. Yeah, but... also not gonna get owned by that guy. Yeah. Or this guy. All right. So now he's got the <laughs> midpoint, doesn't have to worry too much. He's got both Kongs back, he's gonna be switching to Kitty shortly Second here. half of the level is not as hard. Yeah. But the zips are there, so... Zips are there, yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, oh, wrong. Interesting. Robbed a little bit. Yeah. Oh. Robbed again? Void rob. There we go. Uh, oh? I'm wow. really surprised that one didn't work. I can't yeet. So. All right, this is just void command at this point. Come on! Come on! It's probably because of your camera. I had really had to guess, but who knows? Oh! Yeah, yeah like, I, the right. actually, I think you're right. Yes. Okay. Well, that was good <laughs> early. Yeah. There First we go. Try. There we go. Yeet! Fit scared entry. So that bonus. is like maybe like what three seconds or something. Final bonus. No, it's right like here. 40, and he definitely still saved time. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're I, right. I, I, I still save time. Yeah. yeah. Hard final, bonus here, by the way. Final bonus. This is the really, final really bonus in the game. Point. That's what they went with. Ooh. I don't know, like, why Rare decided to make that the final bonus. Or you just team throw Dixie. Yeah. Maybe, like, that was their way of saying, like, hey, you could have done this entire time to uh, cheat some of the bonuses. <laughs> All right. One more zip uh, coming up uh, after this. It's going to be uh, team throwing here to skip uh, a few swoopies. This one, uh, if you don't get it, you usually take damage, so. Uh, yeah, that as, was as, as evidence. That setup was bad. Oh. Oh. All right. Uh, nope. Oh. You actually have to, like, jump on, like, right as he's spawning to yeah. make it up there. All right. <laughs> we're chilling. We're chilling. Okay, there we All go. Right, we got it. Yeah, take it easy. All right. Now we're going to head back to Boomer to uh, open up the last little area. Yeah, probably. he can go for the uh, the bear skip here. He won't save nearly yeah. as much time as the first one would, but. Fit in a couple donations here, probably. Mm -hmm. All right, sounds good. We have $25 from Hurry Meteor that says shout outs to Void for this amazing run of one of my favorite games ever, Rollin' Deep. Rollin', Rollin Deep. We have $100 from the Care Bear who says, I love Donkey Kong Country 3. This game was my jam back. Ooh, nice. Got, go. it. Got it. Awesome. I am an oncology nurse and I see my patients and their families going through really tough times. Just doing my part to help end cancer and take care of those who have it until we do. Thank you very much for your donation. All right, time for the uh, final non-boss level of the run. This is Rocket Rush, very unique level. Uh, we're, no, we're not Kong nor Animal, we are the Rocket Kong. <laughs> sure a lot of you have really bad memories of this from childhood. Yeah, so... Um, he, you can use either the D-pad or LNR to control the rocket here. It doesn't really matter. Some people just use LNR, some people use both. It's easier with LNR because it's not backwards. Yeah, I agree. Here on the descent, he's just trying to not land on top of the beast. If he does, it'll make the bottom burner go, and then it'll slow him down. Yeah, and also it might bounce him into the cliffs, and the uh, rocket barrel will just explode. Yeah, you can't actually take normal damage. It's either instant death or nothing. So also, this level was changed a lot on the GBA version. Also, like, fun fact, on the uh, North American version, there's no G letter in this level. It's true. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, on GBA, this is like a completely different level. This is like true, true... True Kaiser, final. yeah. Yeah. But nice, on uh, Super Nintendo, it's not too bad. Here. Bonkers Bonk nice, but not nice. bonk. Ow. Nice. Well done. <laughs> so, we're gonna do the uh, keg in behind here. Again. This is the nice second to last DK coin of the run. Yeah, that was a good rocket rush. Yeah, that was. Right. So because I got Boomer skip uh, earlier, uh, Boomer is going to have uh, a bit of an issue here. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> this looks really cool. Sadly, because he didn't get the first Boomer skip, he can't go for the third Boomer skip here because uh, if you deposit all your cogs at once here, you can go for the third Boomer skip or you just like skip this entire long sequence here and just leave immediately. Yeah. You can pretty can... much go even further beyond. Yeah. yeah. Probably that... fitting a quick donation. I think. Sky, do we have a donation? Absolutely we do. We have $10 from Jesse Creative who says, thank you for running one of the first games I ever completed, 103%. Thank you for 10 years of awesome games and for fielding all of these comments and donations. Keep rolling deep. Rolling deep. Rolling, rolling, rolling deep. deep. All right, this is uh, Nautilus, the second K roll battle. Uh, so for most of the fight here, we're gonna be waiting for the suction in the top to start going. Then you can throw the barrel into it and it'll spit it down on top and then the back there to hit his propeller. 
Yeah, this whole fight's like kind of weird. Like sound effects don't like work correctly. Yeah. Uh, it's just kind of strange overall, yeah. especially for the, fi the final boss fight. But his hitbox is, is a little bit different here than the other fight. You have to hit the propeller specifically. And he'll be or going for a, a quick hit where you just want to hit K roll like immediately without waiting for him to like go all the way to the right and all the way to the left. That was the first Got quick it. hit. Very good. And the second quick hit is going to be dependent on how well he does this hit because if K roll is not in the right spot, he can't even go for the next one. Yep. That should be good. Yeah, I have a pretty good visual cue. It's like, right after he's done turning around, like his turn around animation. Nice, yep. yeah, yeah. nice. All right, so for the second phase, uh, the gimmick is that the steel keg can absorb the electricity. So you want to place the keg down, it absorbs the electricity, and then you pick the keg up and uh, take out K rule. There is a glitch on the North American version where if you pause the game, the electricity just like goes right through you. Unfortunately, it's uh, slower for the speed run. You can also use that little needle at the top, which indicates which direction or which side the light or the electricity will come from. I didn't know that. You didn't know that? I did not know that. Oh, alright. Yeah, this fight's like really awkward. Like it's frozen. If you think it's bad with Kitty, you should try doing this with Dixie. Like this Dixie oh, yeah. is not meant Awful. to do this boss fight. Oh no. Like, if you lose Kitty in this fight early, it's probably much faster just to die on purpose and get Kitty Final back. Final here. He's going nice. to sack Dixie. Oh! oh. oh. That's fine. They're both Kongs for the ending. All right. Yeah, that's fine. Optimally, you want to lose one of your Kongs there. It doesn't really matter which one. It makes uh, overall but movement faster. You, yeah. Because every time you... Back to the beach. Right. Do we have time for one more quick donation? Please? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We have a $10,000 donation from the Yeti. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And they say, hey all, Yeti here. This DKC run is too wild. Wanted to show some love for our favorite animal buddy, Honk the Goose. Honk. 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 Hey, can we get some honking right now? Thank you for the honking. <laughs> awesome. I almost well, forgot. <laughs> Thanks for So here he's going to lose a little bit on overworld movement. When you like move past the level with both Kongs, you have to wait for the second one to catch up to the first one. So you lose about like something like eight or 10 frames every time. So another that... potential bear skip coming up here. This one would save eight seconds. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Wow, nice. well done. Very nice. Again, that's uh, really hard. It was thought to be tasked only for the longest time until uh, the new method was found. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're turning in our turbo ski for the some fine honking. Uh, fortunately, the uh, final vehicle cannot honk, which brings me great sadness. But uh, final vehicle is necessary to get all the remaining banana birds and get the true ending of the game. And uh, you can only access this if you get all the DK coins. Funky gives us the legendary Le Funky Copter. Le Funky Copter. Le Funky. Yes, oh. aka the Gyrocopter. So now we're just going to be going around and doing all the Banana Bird Coves, uh, some of which obviously you can't even access without the Gyrocopter, which is why you need them. And Void's going to be getting his uh, tech out. Uh, the tech, yeah. Five of them here. Yeah, so the codes are going to start getting uh, pretty long here, so he's going to be writing down the inputs. Yeah, so there's going to be three seven-input ones, two eight-inputs, and the last one will be nine inputs. Yeah, the nine-input uh, cave is like the true final boss of this game. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Isn't it like 12 inputs or something on GBA? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's pretty 13, ridiculous. I think. 13? I think it's even 14. Jesus. I remember Lumo doing it. Yeah, I think it was mentioned earlier, but the amount of inputs is actually dependent on how many banana birds you have at the moment. Like when I was doing uh, some testing for this game, I like yeah. used a cheat code to give myself like 255 banana birds, and like it was like something like 100 input code or something. <laughs> yeah, I remember you told me that. Yeah. yeah. So we actually routed it a little bit to uh, take advantage of that. Uh, we go to Barnacle, who gives us a banana bird, and that's actually going to take the place of one of the seven input caves. <laughs> Yeah, there is, like, no upper limits, but fortunately there's only 15 banana birds uh, you can have uh, normally. Probably have time for another yeah, donation. You, yeah, you can go ahead on donations. Yeah. Yeah. All right, sounds good. $25 from Demacho Main that says, Longtime watcher, first time donator. I grew up watching my older sister play DKC3, so seeing a run, runner like Boyd destroy it is simply amazing. Good luck on the run, and to all other runners, this is GDQ. Thank you. Akechi donates $20 saying, good luck on the run, Void, looking nice so far. Also, I guess Sonic rolls deep, too. Put my money on the Sonic 06 bonus game. Thanks for all the work behind the scenes. 
Disgruntled donates $10, saying a quick tenor and shout out to Void. Thanks for making my work day more bearable. You're welcome. Bearable. I guess. Uh, These puns. Uh, bears. Thank goodness this is late in the run. Otherwise, I'm going to be getting a lot of bear puns here. <laughs> Coming up is the optimal flower grab. This used to be a lot harder when the overworld movement was different. For you, fly with the flower, and you enter Here's the Here's another house. bear skip we can do. Mm -hmm. Last bear skip in this the run. This one stays about 10 seconds. Yes. Yeah. It's a bit weird due to a lag frame. You would actually uh, get forced to re-enter. Yeah, so what would happen skip. is you would exit it, and then like it's forced to enter because of like, the way the gyrocopter works or something. And then it just leaves immediately upon re-entering. Given the bowling ball to Bazooka, and he'll fire out of the cannon along with the Kongs. Bazooka, one of the few remaining veterans of the Crimean War. Yeah, look at his mustache, dude. It's glorious. What was your power ranking of the Bears again, Claude? Like, I, I thought Bazooka was like second favorite for you. Uh, I think it was first, actually. His mustache is just too ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. A lot of, I, got, a lot I gotta of agree with that. Mm -hmm. Also, a big fan of Baloo the Bear. Baloo the Bear. Final boss down. We're done. Awesome. And now we just pop into Wrinkly's cave and... Yeah, so he's guaranteed to have 103 as long as this next cutscene starts because there's no way to get all the banana birds without actually getting all the bonus coins and all the DK coins, etc. Mm -hmm. So the cutscene started, which means he has 103. So time will be coming up shortly. It'll be on the fade to black after this uh, next cutscene with the banana bird queen. We've rescued all her children. This cutscene makes no sense, by the way. Yeah. I mean, we'll uh, imprison this the, bird the, the behind the wall. Queen the, the lore behind sense, Donkey yeah. Kong is intricate and, you know, very, very in-depth. Yeah. All right, so time's coming up. Time. time. Insane run. Insane, wow. Insane, truly insane, insane, insane run. run. Sub two. Now we get the amazing training sequence where the Kongs ride the Banana Bird Queen, chase around <laughs> K. Rool in a hovercraft for some reason, I guess, and eventually K. Rool gives up, and that's it. Look, look at it. It's glorious. <laughs> look, look at him Jasmine. go, yeah. He's got some good juice. This is how they decide to end the trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> His hoverboat runs out of gas or something. Bought good it. aim. Good Not an aim. <laughs> and that's, yeah, that's that's that's, that's one hundred three percent. So. Very nice run, though. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Great job. Do I do I have some time actually to show off a glitch? It'll be like super fast, maybe like two minutes yeah. or so. Just do it anyways. Yes. Let's do it. Let's do it. It's 103, by the way. Right. Honk. 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 Uh, where am I? Okay. Yeah, right. so we didn't talk about this too much, but he's going to be showing off some cool tech in Rocket Rush. Uh, definitely not useful for the speedrun, that's for sure, but uh, yeah. we won't spoil it uh, too much. Uh, we'll yeah. explain it after it happens. It's pretty interesting. Something worth Pretty noting. Uh, somewhere something first. worth noting about Krematoa is yeah, after you unlock Nautilus, uh, it gets like all the levels. You get have to a, take uh, damage. They get tainted. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah right. Yeah, yeah. All right. So yeah, he'll be uh, taking damage here, and then he'll be uh, getting Kong Barrel, and then swapping, mm -hmm. and then he'll be doing uh, all of Rocket Rush again. Yeah. Hope you, hope you guys like that level. Yeah. I like that level. And after Rocket Rush will be a special surprise, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Yeah, I don't really like the uh, the palette that Krematoa has once you've beaten it. The, the red background. Yeah, too different yeah. in this level, but... I'm just used to it at this point, I guess, because I always practice on a completed file. Yeah. It's got a good jam. Mm-hmm. Rock Rush, by the way, is the only level that uh, does not contain any bonuses whatsoever, because obviously in order to get to it, you have to give the Boomer all your bear coins. So yeah, the 
secret tech will hopefully be coming up uh, <laughs> right after the ascent is completed. What if it doesn't work? It's gonna be embarrassing. No, it, it'll pretty, work. Pretty embarrassing. Yeah. Bonk this again. Nice. Bonk this. All, All right. right, get ready. Nice. Nice. Oh, yeah. Got it. So he wrong warp to this. <laughs> which is a, a glitched level. It doesn't normally look this bad with the Krematoa palette. It looks like really yeah. crazy. This is actually uh, the one two uh, level layout, but without any sprites. Yeah, like nothing works correctly. There's like no collision on anything. There's no enemies. Like this, yep, this rope, yeah, you can grab this rope. Can't beat this level. You're trapped. This is hell. This is, yeah, You're this completely is soft lock here if you do that before completing Rocket Rush. Or even after. Yep. There's no escape. This is uh, Kitty and Dixie's home forever now. Yep. Nice run. Nice, nice run, nice though. Nice. That was 103. But yeah, so. thanks for watching. If you guys like Thank Donkey, uh, check out the dis uh, the wiki, dkcspeedruns.com. Join the Discord. Uh, we like to have fun there. And yeah, keep on keep on donating. Keep on rolling deep. And uh, shout out to RPC. Shout out to RPC. One th also, one thing I want to mention is that the task for this uh, category is like a decade old now. And it's like it's also for 105. So, does anyone that really likes this game likes tasking, please make an updated 103 task because that yeah. would be so cool. It'll make the 149 happen, I think. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thank you guys. Yeah, that's that's it. That's it. All right, that was Void rolling out. Let's hear it one more time for Void and the awesome commentary from the couch. Awesome job, everyone. All right, time for a couple quick donations here. We have $5 from 7255 that says, come on, everyone, we can get the Sonic 06 run. Speaking of Sonic 06, we are getting very close to unlocking the Sonic the Hedgehog 06 run, $35,214 out of $36,000. So about $800 left. Please get those donations and if you would like to see that run. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Good afternoon again, friends. Hello, my name is Listar, and I'll be your host for the upcoming Sonic Block. Yeah, super excited, right? I mean, what better way to go fast than gotta go fast? I think that's how that works. Listen, all right, Sega does. Genesis does what Nintendo don't. 
What do you mean? What do you mean the next run is on a Nintendo console? What are you talking about? Anyway, so uh, next up is Sonic Colors uh, with Critical Sid. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Before we do move on to the next run, we do have an interview coming up uh, with the Prevent Cancer Foundation. While we wait. Hello, I am Kung Fu Fruit Cup back here. I am with Nimi, a professor at Duke University working with, to, to prevent cancers. So it's great that she's also working with the Prevent <laughs> Cancer Foundation. How are you today? Good. Good, it's great to meet you and to get to talk to you for a bit. Yeah. Um, so I know that you have been helping to provide uh, we're, we're working with women around the world and are fascinated with, with cervical cancer and how to provide help and health care and things for that. Do you want to go into a bit about your, your work with women? Yeah. Um, so just to, to just give some numbers, um, there are more than a billion women globally who have no access to basic sexual and reproductive care. And that's unacceptable. And cervical cancer is one disease that exemplifies this crisis. So what we're really trying to do is figure out how to solve the problem to prevent cervical cancer. And let me remind you, it's the one cancer that we can completely prevent. We can make it zero, and yet half a million women die every year. Wow. And what we want to do is figure out how to solve that problem so that when we get more cancer cures and we figure out how to solve other cancers, we've set up the scaffold to actually um, make a difference to people with the solutions that they can access. So you're working to make sure that, that women not only know that this is a treatable thing, that we already have answers for this, we have treatments for this, but to be able to provide those treatments as well. I think that's fantastic. That it also kind of branches outside of that and would be like, like you said, like a scaffold, like base mm -hmm. work for, for other things that we deal with and suffer with. Mm -hmm. I think that's fantastic. And I know that that leads you specifically into your work in Peru mm -hmm. with women there. I've heard the uh, amazing term, hope ladies. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so we actually work in more than eight countries. But I would say right now we're prioritizing Peru because we want to show this work. So let me just take a step back. So when, 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 a, when a person here in the US goes to the primary care physician, they might get screened for cancer. And then if something suspicious shows up, they might go to another clinic to get a diagnosis. And then again, if they need treatment. And so if you have transportation, you have insurance, you've got all those good things, you can do all of those steps and benefit from it. But if you live far away from a hospital, if you don't have insurance, all of a sudden, you can't get the care you need. That's and hard. what happens is you end up going to the hospital when you have cancer. I'm, I'm using the hypothetical you. And what we want to do is prevent that by bringing, by innovating on technologies that can be brought to people. They're as good as the ones in the hospital, but they can be accessible in the community. They can be accessible for people to use themselves. So you might ask, well, if you can't get them to the hospital, how are you going to get these technologies to people? And so we're working in Peru to create a social franchise model. We ask house, housewives in slum communities who are called Hope Ladies. This is actually the work of my collaborator in Peru, who's the former health minister. And she's essentially empowering these Hope Ladies to go door to door and hand out these tests that women can take. Because if a woman is screened, there's a really good chance that we can catch her cancer and cure it. And the idea is that these Hope Ladies get a little bit of that money, so they're incented to keep continuing to distribute these technologies. So we want to put the tools, the solutions in the hands of people that women can relate to, and then help them essentially spread those tools into their community through a combination of education, empowerment, and of course, distribution of the tests that women need to essentially care for themselves. 
So have you gotten to a point where you think you've seen some uh, beneficial results happening down in Peru or any kind of stories or anything you'd want to tell? You know, we're in the midst of doing this, but I will tell you one thing. Um, so what we have done, and I'll talk about one technology, um, since we're all technologists here. Right. Um, <laughs> I don't know how many of you know about this, but for women in the audience, you know, the mainstay of a gynecology exam, a pelvic exam, is a metal instrument called the speculum. And a little bit of trivia, it was invented 200 years ago in the American South, and it was, um, let me just say, a really horrendous device for many people, and sometimes women fear the exam and don't go get care. And my students and I were thinking, why are we still working with a 200-year-old technology when we've gone all the way from main stations um, in centralized places to, you know, Apple Watches? Like, what's going on? <laughs> why does healthcare technology take forever to change? And so my students essentially came up with this really cool idea where we can completely take the discomfort out of an exam by making it uber comfortable and then giving women the power to use it. That's fantastic. And so that's an example of how we're using innovation and technology to change the way we, we actually implement healthcare. That's fantastic. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> speaking as a fellow woman, I, um, <laughs> I, I definitely respect that and appreciate that. <laughs> Just kind of making it a more comfortable and accessible yeah. process is a really, really beneficial thing. So I think that's really great. Um, and so when it comes to your work, like you can, you can so easily tell how passionate that you are about all of this and how hard you've been working. And uh, even just talking to her for a few minutes before this interview, I could just see all this like wonderful energy radiating from her. And um, I just want to know a bit more like about, about your kind of like passion and, and like how you got into this and then, you know, your relation to the PCF and then J games on quick as well. Wow. Okay. Let I me let me let me unpack that. <laughs> so the first question is how I got into it. Yeah. If you, there's a little something. Yeah. Can... I know. I have to say I love solving problems. I just I, I love tinkering. I love trying to figure out how to get things done fast, how to get it done efficiently, and how I can make something unique, something that you know is is me. And I think uh, as an engineer. Um, I think of myself as an artist, right? You, you could have a blank canvas and what you create is yours. Um, now, if it can save lives, that's even better. And so I'm also passionate about women's health because I come from a country where um, there are great disparities and um, access to healthcare is nowhere near what you know, we can get here. And so when you experience both worlds, you kind of ask yourself, why isn't the world equitable? Why can't everybody have health care? Why are we spending so much money and yet not saving people's lives from preventable cancers? What does that mean for the ones that, you know, need to be treated? How are we going to get care to those people if we can't even do the basic stuff? So it's both passion for making the world a better place for everyone and also this idea that it can be fun. It can be intellectually challenging. It can be like gaming. Right. Um, you don't have to like sacrifice fun to make a difference. And you can do them at the same time. And so that's what really sort of gets me up every day. And of course, I have to say the third thing is working with young people, just like yourselves. Um, being able to work with people that aren't afraid, that are sort of invincible, right? Because they're young and they feel like they can do anything. So why not do this thing? Um, so that's the basic idea. Yeah, so so that makes me think, like, and I know you said you were asked before, but but for the audience, would you consider yourself a gamer? <laughs> yeah, I do gaming every day. No, it's a little <laughs> bit of a lie. Not the kind of gaming that you do. I mean, I am in front of computers, so it's digital. And I'm telling you, half the time, I'm trying to solve puzzles. Um, you know, I, I often tell my students, like, we have all the pieces of the puzzle, but I can't see the picture. I know what the picture should look like, but I can't see it. And... Um, we're always optimizing to be faster, to be better, and uh, to also have impact. So I would say we're gaming. Um, of course, I also play a little bit of chess and other stuff, but really, <laughs> I think we're all gamers, and I think we all benefit from gaming. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. We're all working hard to be fast and efficient and make things work and make things happen. And build up our brains. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, that is absolutely a thing. Well, I very much appreciate talking to you. Thank you so much for letting us know more about what you do and how you've been working with the PCF. 
And uh, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I just want to say thank you to GDQ. I mean, it's amazing um, the, the support that Prevent Cancer gets. And I also want to thank Prevent Cancer because, you know, we take risks when we try to change the way, you know, things are done. And to be able to get supported by a foundation that, you know, is willing to take risks and support this kind of work, we're eternally grateful to, to, to both of you. Well, I know that we're all happy to help. So thank you so much. Thank I you. It. We are coming up next with the Sonic Colors Run. Yes. Thank you. Have no fun. <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone. I have some good news for you, friends. You're all ready? The Sonic 06 run has been met. Before we even get to the Sonic block, that's how fast we are. So are you all ready to play video games in a manner that Sonic would appreciate? Yeah, we're going to go at an adequate speed. No, we're going fast, right? Yeah. We'll be right back with the Sonic Colors run, starting off the Sonic block. Before we get there, a few donations. We have $200 from Misfit PM. I need Sonic 06 to happen. I have good news for you, friend. We have $100 from Mute Key. Attention, would the owner of a white hover car shaped like an egg please report to the front desk? Your vehicle has been broken into. Again, with the owner of a white hover car shaped like an egg. Hey, wait a minute. We have $50 from Emma Z.